Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, we are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of brilliant idiotness. You know this week, uh, our guy Andrew Schultz is headlining Madison Square Garden Friday night and Saturday night. Two sold out shows. Uh, the Life Tour. The Life Tour will be at Madison Square Garden. You know, he sold out the garden in like 90 minutes, man. And so he's uh, doing his show Friday. So he's getting prepared for that this week. So he won't be here this week. But we have an action packed show for you nonetheless. NYLA is here. Yeah. Big Nyla. Yeah. Uh, we had a great week. We was in Atlanta for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival. That happened this weekend in Atlanta, man. Um, thank you to everybody who pulled up, everybody who came out, all the aspiring podcasters, all the people who have podcasts now. You know, it's just a real dope event for creatives. And, you know, somebody came to me this weekend and they said, you know, there's no other podcast festival out there. I don't believe that. Chris, am I... Am I I, I, I think I'm, I think that's not correct. There was one uh, that was around a few years ago called Now Hear This, which mm -hmm. was in L.A. and New York. I think the thing that was unsuccessful about that festival and what works for Black Effect is Now Hear This tried to take like, oh, we'll have one true crime show and one hip hop show mm -hmm. and one LGBT. You know, they tried to hit every different genre. Yeah. And then when people got out of the the live shows that they didn't care about. Mm. There was no energy. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. Whereas Black yeah, yeah. Effect, like everybody was there for the same energy, yeah. the same yeah. space. Like, and I'm like, this is what works. And I think that's what you want. Like, you want something that's um, communal, maybe. Absolutely. You know? I, I call it. I call it a Black podcast family reunion. There you go. Yeah. That's what I call there it. You because you know you got the DJ playing. Salute to my guy Louis V who's providing the soundtrack. But it's real festival energy. Like you got the food trucks. You got the vendors. You got merch. You know you got people walking around. They outside smoking their weed. We got alcohol. Like it's a real. Festival. festival yeah. You know? You can talk to people. You can talk to people. Like, and you know, and uh, this year we had it to where we had the speakers outside. So, you know, even if you're outside kicking it, smoking your weed or whatever, you can still hear what's going on. And, you yeah. know, people come for different things. Like, you know, we started off high energy with the Poor Minds podcast. And then you, we came with a... Uh, Baller Alert. Well, well, before Baller Alert, it was a panel. Oh. It was a, I think it was a panel between Paul Mines and uh, uh, Ball Alert, if I'm not mistaken. It was the it was the the money. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was the the, the business panel basically. So John Hope Bryan was on that. Mm. Damon John was on that. Will Lucas was on that. Ashana Ayers was on that. Um, Oh, my mind slips me. Slips, it slips my mind. I'm so sorry. But thank you to everybody who participated. Then Ball Alert came out. Ball Alert brings out T.I. Yeah. Right? And then, if I'm not mistaken, I think we either had another panel or it was Debbie Brown. I don't remember the lineup, man. I just can't, I can't recall. <laughs> yeah. But I just know that every... We, we, I like to cover all bases. I like to cover everything that I'm into. So you know yeah. you're going to get your comedy with somebody like the Jess Hilariouses of the world. Right? You know you're going to get your, 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 your woman energy with poor minds and horrible decisions. Decisions. You know, Wallow and Gilly, they're going to come out there and give you, you know, laughter and you're going to learn something, right? Debbie Brown comes out there, quiets the whole crowd, makes the whole crowd meditate with her mindfulness, you know, and and, and, her, and her meditation energy. So it was, a, it was a fantastic show. I didn't miss nobody, right? Horrible Decisions, Ball Alert, Wallow and Gilly, Paul Mines, Will Lucas. Will Lucas had the financial literacy covered. Uh, what about uh, Steel and Glasses? Steel, yeah, that Steel and Glasses. That was a branding and authenticity panel. So Steel, Glasses, Mandy. Um, man, I can't remember who else was on that damn panel. Please forgive me. Blame it on my mind, not my heart. But I really appreciate y'all, man. And just, once again, being out there and just being able to build with all the different, you know, creatives. Like, podcasting is really a thing. Yeah. Like, it's really a thing. I'll never forget Chris coming to me 12 years ago saying to me, you need to start a podcast and write a book. And I was like, why the fuck would I start a podcast when I got my own morning show? <laughs> I literally said that to him 12 years. I'm like, why the fuck would I start a podcast That's when I got my own morning show? But then I started thinking, bro, you've been fired four times from radio. Mm. So at least having the podcast will always give you a a, a, a voice. You'll always have a platform. Yep. Lo and behold, 12 years later, podcasting is a business. Yeah. Like literally a billion dollar 
business as far as ad revenue is concerned. And growing. And growing. Do you think it's sustainable, though? I was thinking about that, too. Like, when I think about, like, all of the different people that are out there, you know, doing podcasts, all of them can't be sustainable, right? Like, eventually, it's only going to be the cream of the crop. Are the people who can afford to stay in business, basically. I, yeah, I think it's, like, artists and labels and music industry. Like, media, talent, or the new artists signing with, you know, a label essentially can either help or hurt. You can end up shelved. You can not profit. You can recoup. You know, I think it's the same approach. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's the question is, who is it sustainable for, right? For the creators, it is because the bar of entry is so low, mm -hmm. right? Like, the, the whole reason we were able 12 years ago to say, like, all right, fuck it, let's just start a podcast or start a podcast network even was there was no there was nothing stopping us in terms of the capital we needed the access we needed and that's still true today anybody can ultimately make a podcast mm -hmm. now can you make a living off of it can you make a living off it that's and when you question. compare it, when you compare it to record labels because i hear people do that all of the time how do you know when when uh, when you got a a, a, a hit so to speak. Like, it, it feels like it takes longer to get a hit in podcasting than it does to get a hit in the music business. I think it's going to be more niche going mm -hmm. forward, right? But, like, I don't know. What's, what's, what's your goal? What's your expectations? Is your goal to have a main source of income and then make an extra 50 grand a year doing a podcast you're really passionate that's about? That's right. I think that's great. I think that every if everybody lowers their expectations, see, the problem is, you know, number one, about four or five years ago, nobody knew the value of podcasts or everybody was overpaying for things, right? right? So now the market has, has has leveled out and people know if this person gets this amount of downloads, this is the amount of money that they should be getting. And when it comes to new podcasts, I don't care how big your name is, you shouldn't just be throwing, you know, big bags of money at this person because just because this person has a name doesn't mean that, you know, the podcasting, uh, the podcast is going to grow. And also, uh, what's, what, what's, what's happening now is, well, what happened is everybody was lying. So yeah, motherfuckers lying about the millions of dollars they were making. You know you fucking lying. So if you <laughs> lie and say you got 10 million, I mean, and I'm talking about bums. Bums were lying. Like, people that weren't getting any type of numbers, any type of traction was lying about the numbers that they were getting. So if the bums are lying... The top tier talent is like, yo, if the bums are getting this kind of money, why are we not getting that kind of money? And you can't explain to the top tier talent that the bums are lying other than to say bums lie. <laughs> I don't know why liars lie, I but don't they, know. Lie. they lie. <laughs> That's Working the truth. And that, real, that, that is one thing that really, really ruined the game. And um, I think if everybody just lowers their expectations and realizes like, yo, if I can make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year or an extra hundred thousand dollars a year talking for an hour and a half a week, that's a great living. You yeah. won. Yeah. You won. But I mean, it depends. What Chris said is like, what do you want out of it? Some people just want to be viral and let people hear them talk. So, you know, some people just want. Nah, it's about the dollar dollar bills, y'all. Nah, there's a lot of people that do it as a hobby. Yeah, a lot of people just want to be seen. People that go to my studio and they just they just want to do it as a hobby. They just enjoy the act of doing it. But who's listening to them? That's like people that go live and there's ten people watching. I mean. I think those nobody, people go live and there's 10 people watching and they media, follow it. And, and media is like being an artist. There's singers who stand on the corner asking for change, but they do it Damn. because they... <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. They want to do it just because they love to do it. Yeah, because even when you look at the space, right? Like, I, I be trying to explain to people too. There's a lot of podcasts, not a lot, but there's quite a few people who go like really, really viral, mm -hmm. right? But then there's podcasts that don't go viral at all. But these are the people that are doing super numbers. Like, how many of those true crime podcasts go viral, Chris? <laughs> Very few, but their fan bases are plugged in in a way that the <laughs> viral shows don't have. Yeah. Mm. How many, like, how many, uh, how many podcasts, how many of these news talk podcasts go viral? But they do millions of downloads per episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's the stuff that... That's why I, I laugh sometimes when I see certain people arguing about shit online. Like, I'm like, bro, you're not... Y'all not even in the, the real conversation mm. of what's really moving this podcast world right now. Yeah. Well, it's within their niche. It's in their niche. You got, like, three or four people fighting for the same small little share of the market. Yeah.
It's, it's, but, but God bless them. I wish them the best. <laughs> okay, all I'm saying is the Black Effect Podcast Festival, second annual. We had a great time. We will be back in Atlanta uh, again next year, already working on the lineup uh, for next year. This was the first, well, we, this is only our second year, but we opened it up to podcasts that aren't even on Black Effect. Like Wallow and Gilly, not with Black Effect. Um, Ball Alert Show's not with Black Effect. Poor Minds, not with Black Effect. But I'm just like, that, that, that was never me and Dolly's vision, just to have Black Effect podcast up there our vision is you know people that are in the space like in the space let's bring it out like it's a it's literally a black podcast family reunion so you know salute to everybody we saw man uh we went to the script club too in atlanta had a ball taylor never seen a pussy before well one that she didn't well taylor, she never saw. this is so fun taylor said she never saw a pussy in the script club Really? Oh, she did say that. I haven't. But I haven't been to those strip clubs. Like, oh, you never been to a strip club? I have, but the strip clubs I've been to didn't. They still had at least like a thong going. You must have been up north, period. Yeah. Philly, New York area. New York, that's it. So you okay? See, down south different. I've been telling y'all for years. You can go down south, put your, put your whole foot in the vagina, wiggle your toes if you want to. Uh, what? what? If you want to. <laughs> wait, wait, for real? If you wanted to, yeah. yeah. Why is that what naturally came off the dome? Yeah, wait, that's what, what, in the that vagina and wiggle your toes. Like, so they get violated like that? That's oh. not violated. I said if they if, might be into if, that. Yeah, if, if they're into it. So a girl, a guy can just swipe. His hand like on a pussy and like should be cool. Were you not in the same place I was at Saturday night? I didn't see anyone do that. You was you was on your phone too damn much. You no, should have looked wasn't. up. I was trying not to look. Well, you should have looked up. <laughs> I didn't want to look all, at all, it. All you had to do was look up. <laughs> you, all the women around me—that's exactly what, what they were doing. With her pussy. Well, they were slapping ass. They women like I, I ass is different, but puss like that's what I'm saying. Like there were. Oh, I didn't see no women playing with no. That's what I'm saying. Just touching people's vaginas. That's like, but I don't think so that's a dirty. Thing. Ugh. You, what you mean is you got it one. Me squirm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't <laughs> like, like going to the strip club with people like that. Salute to Magic City, though. <laughs> we had a ball in Magic City. Salute to Lala. Even Ooh. though somebody stole your wings. Somebody definitely stole our wings in Magic City. Salute to Lala. We had a fantastic server. She made sure the ones came. Magic City, you see, I got my Magic City hoodie on right now. They gave me souvenirs. We had a good time. They gave me merch. God, you know what I mean? He left with souvenirs. That's, That's right. <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. They bring you a one. They give you a book bag. They bring you a ones in a Magic City book bag. Oh, wow. Oh, it was it was fantastic. I, I haven't been in Magic City in so long. I mean, the, the last time I've been in Magic City, I was dead broke, so it didn't even matter. But we had a ball in there. That's Somebody fire. did steal our wings. Uh, because we ordered wings and a person went to the window and said they was with us. And so all the wings that we ordered, they took. They came up. God bless them. They came up. So, you know, clearly he was hungry. I, 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 have, I have no problem. We live in a world where a person can probably afford to get in a script club, afford to have a couple of drinks, but can't afford wings. That's how I know America is. We, we used to be a country. <laughs> we used to be a proper country. We used to be a proper motherfucking country, man. Um, let's well, do... Huh? When we was in there, they played like that. They did? Mm-hmm. Before I left, you know, and I left. went for the music. They, well, play, they play like that. <laughs> no, I went. I, <laughs> he over here lying. I went because my wife likes to go. Like, no, yeah, I did. Right. My, my, we know the truth. My, my wife and, and Dolly, they wanted to go to the strip club. Uh -huh. Like, let's go. We ain't been to the strip club in a couple of years. Last time we went to the strip club was in Ghana. So we went to Magic City. But I told you that. I wanted to go hear the music. I wanted to go hear what the DJs were playing this guy in the strip the clubs. Music. This guy the is music. crazy. But I didn't really, I, I don't remember hearing like Man. that. Yeah, they play like that. I was hearing old records. You probably like, heard like that. They were playing it when y'all was picking the woman. <laughs> so you probably wasn't paying attention. Oh, we was kicking all the light-skinned women out the section? Oh. You said, where the dark-skinned sisters but at? Y'all did the same thing in Ghana, too. <laughs> where the dark-skinned really? sisters he at? Did, he did this the colorism same thing. Here, man. Where the dark-skinned <laughs> sisters at? He did the same exact thing That's in Ghana. Right. And you kept That's asking. That's right. <laughs> Every time he smacked ass, he said, I love my wife. I love my wife. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I did that in Ghana? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, think, I think you was By drunk. the way, my wife was with us in Ghana. No, no, yeah, okay. she was with you. Yes, that's right. She was bringing the dark skin was, women in the section. Nervous. Telling the light skin women they had to go, okay? We don't want no women that can't yeah. say nigga no more. We want <laughs> the dark skin Yo, sisters in the section. Her and Dolly were really playing madam. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, no, it, it was funny. They were having was, a ball. Yeah, it was fun. It was having a ball. But it was cool to hear like that in Magic. Like that it was hitting in magic? Yeah. Yes. Really? Stripper was going in with her legs. I was like, Damn. That's a dope ass song. Great beat. It, Definitely. In a strip club? Yes, How sir. I miss all that? How much does a dance cost in a place like that? 
Did you get one? <laughs> I didn't get a name. Do you like pay I individually? Place like that? Oh. I was. I was just. We was just throwing one. No, you just. Yeah. Like, we just, isn't it usually pay, twenty? You pay I mean, for they a come dance. up to you and they give you the dance. They come up to you and give you a dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come up to you and give you the dance. <laughs> you don't gotta pay for a lap dance. <laughs> So how much does no, it cost? No, because he got a section. Usually you got to pay for it. money. Oh, yeah. I, I, he I, had a money. section, yeah, we so had, they just we, came in. They, we, we, had, we had a private room. Uh, okay. Yeah, so they took us That's in the back. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, Have you been to a strip club before? Sure. Delilah's done in Philadelphia. I don't that know that one. That years ago. No, no, no. Every now and then you should go to the strip club. Funny, it's crazy. That's crazy. Every now and then you should go to the strip club. I'm not going front. It's the thought about it. For the music, right? <laughs> for the music. I do think they I do think they need a they need an older strip club, though. Yeah. What do you Meaning mean? like like with older women. They probably do. Okay. Like I wouldn't mind a 40 and up strip club with Charlotte, 40 and get up. Get out of here. So I'm <laughs> dead ass serious. Yeah, what's the, what's the playlist? I get it. Oh, like Jeezy, you can still play the Jeezy and T.I. and the stuff that we came. I mean, they were playing Jeezy in Magic City. I just think you need a 40 and up strip club. It just uh, feels a little like. Ah. Yeah, they're children. You starting to feel a little guilty, huh? A little, just a little. You like, know what? I little. appreciate older That's men who point. feel weird about, you know, dealing with younger women. It just, it just felt a little bit weird, you know what I mean? And then the youth is like, they, they BBL'd out. You felt like Drake. Mm -hmm. What you mean I felt like Drake? Doesn't he like younger girls and all that? What are you talking about? Oh what, what, what are you talking Come about? Come on. Tell what are you talking about? Well, that is what they were saying online. Because yeah. you Y'all believe everything y'all see online? Hello? Not everything. Jesus Christ. Not, not everything. Right. But yeah. I was going to say, I feel like tricking culture is so normal in Atlanta that younger girls dating an older man is very normal. So being at the strip club and seeing younger bitches like... Damn, Damn. Damn. why do you got to be the B word? Oh, My right. God. Crazy. Women don't have no respect for each other. I meant that out of a term of endearment. It, okay, okay. It's all about tone. Okay. So <laughs> with... <laughs> So with them, uh, that's normal. I think for you, it's not normal because when you're dealing with women that age, you're working with them, or you know your daughter's not far off. Yeah, so you have that's a exactly what I was thinking, yo. I'm not gonna lie, like and you, you, that shit will cross your mind. You'll be like, damn, this is somebody's daughter. That's how I was. <laughs> How long did it take you to start to look at it like that? Not though? long. <laughs> like it, it wasn't long at all. I just, that's why I just be sitting back, letting everybody enjoy themselves. Like, damn, yo. But, but then I thought, then, but then that's when I'm like, spend the money, man. These girls need it. Give them the goddamn <laughs> money. I, like, please, rent. give them the money. <laughs> Like, I don't know. They, 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 I do wish it was just a strip club. Or just, like, I would at least say, like, 40 and up. You but had a private section. It's not going to be that, though, because they, they're trying to get, uh, they're supposed to be trying to get out of the strip club. Not yeah, trying to, they, also, you could have picked the older ones. You didn't have to pick the younger ones. You had a private little thing. I was already being colorist. I didn't want to be ages, too. Uh. You know? <laughs> 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 I, I was already being colorist. I'd imagine that. Y'all got any 40 year old strippers? I should have asked. <laughs> so that's great. That's <laughs> wow. No light like skin. Be like 35 up, brown paper bag test up. 40 like and beer. up. That's right. 40 <laughs> and up, dark, darker hue. I don't think okay. you're going to find any, though. Uh, what? They're all on OnlyFans. They're not in the strip club. Nah, they on podcasts now. <laughs> right. <laughs> all the old scrippers is on podcasts telling old scripper stories. Uh, <laughs> let's do some uh, any memes necessary, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Any was it all memes necessary? All memes necessary. Um, okay. Man, why are we playing? Let's get I know, to it. That's man. what I'm waiting Let's for. To <laughs> it, Kendrick yes. motherfucking Lamar. Let's go. <laughs> Kendrick motherfucking <laughs> Lamar finally uh responded. Finally. He put out a Relax. record called Euphoria. No, it is it is finally. Is it finally? Yeah. Didn't it's he respond finally, faster man. than Does that matter to us right now? Did that still matter? Because you I, said earlier it doesn't matter no more. It don't matter to me, but I think it does matter. I think it does matter to some people. I think that this record right here hits way harder if it's delivered a week ago. Yes. Yeah, no, I, w I wish it was. I really do. But, you know. I think, I think this... Why? Just because timing matters nowadays. And I can't stand all of these people that keep bringing up, well, Nas took three months to respond to Jay-Z when he put out Ether. Bro, that was 2000... 2000 or 99, 2000. Time was so different. Thing, everything was different. Time moves so. You know how much? You know how long three months is nowadays? Three months is a lifetime. And I don't. <laughs> three months is three months, but three months is a lifetime in 2024. He didn't wait three months though. How, how many days? Why are you pulling three months? How, let's do a calendar. How many days since uh, push up? I think it was about 17. It was 17. It was 13. 
Damn, man. And, and I think they said it took Drake 23 to respond to like that. So it took Drake 23 days to respond to like but that. Drake was on tour. Who cares? What you mean? He's shit. busy on tour. Not not only and has guess what? Two... And Kendrick was busy raising his son. So now what? Y'all got to stop. Y'all See, this, crazy, I'm telling you, the bro. internet is crazy. This the way is... you can just manipulate people yes. and just make them believe whatever you say Wait, is all wild. She, all she said was Kendrick is busy raising his son. Is that not what he son? said? Listen, all of this is fun and games till Drake jump out there and say Kendrick out here fucking white women. Mm. Then what y'all going to do? Well, guess what? He already said that. He so it's not nothing. It don't matter. And worldwide, whatever. I know. It, but He's not going to be as lyricist it, as Kendrick. It, 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 it's, it's, di it's different when you hear it. It don't matter. It's, it's different when you hear it in a dish. You know how you know it's different? Because everything that Kendrick said in Euphoria has already been said. Yep. Yeah, but it's how he said it. And it's going to be how Drake says it, too. It's not. It's not Watch. I don't Drake. know. Right now, Kendrick has had the better delivery. Because guess what? Kendrick can still go me. back at Drake like, well, guess what? My baby, my, my mom and or wife is black. But you can say no, for yourself. No, technically she's white, He's according to you. According to you, according, according to, to you, she's according white. According to you, she's white. And according How? to Ken according to Kendrick, she's white. <laughs> yeah. Because Kendrick said if you half white, if you buy race, she half white. She's yeah. Latin. No, she's half white, half black. Now. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, but I'm riding with Alex. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. Alex! <laughs> I didn't know that either. Alex, I know you're lying. We need to look that up. So exactly. I look it up. No, what? Yeah. I don't believe that. But let's, let's Kendrick get... got white babies, bro. According to y'all. According no, to y'all. No, don't disrespect. According, no, what's her according to him. What's her ethnicity? She's black. So she's of course half. she's black. If you're, she... if you're biracial. I don't think she's... I know what she looks like, but... She's, She's African American. Oh, it says she has African American ancestry from her father's side, and her mother is biracial. Oh, her mother's so biracial. Black so, still. She's still so she's more majority, black. She's seventy five percent black. black. She's still more black though than oh, so, so what Drake is. Now we going about percentages now. <laughs> like that's <laughs> yes, great. that matters. <laughs> so Drake is white, but his wife is black. You, well, since that's we're here, by white since we're here, let's have the conversation. Okay. <laughs> I think it's funny that Drake. I mean, that people are calling Drake a white boy. I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny that, you know, Kendrick is playing that card. But let's be clear, he's a black man, guys. Yes. Like, he's, come on. Like, like the, the conversation isn't whether or not he's he's black. It's about, is he cultured? Cole is more. Well, is he black cultured? Yes, I agree. But also, I think the line about, I don't want to hear you say nigga no more, is about how he says nigga, because there's a video of Drake going around where he's, like, having a, com a casual conversation, but he says E-R. But, Listen, but, in a, been but, told in a, but in a casual conversation. So I, it'd be like me being like, yo, that nigga right there. I done told like, y'all, Drake, J. Cole, they should say nig. Because they have <laughs> black. I've been saying that for years. I've that's been saying that. I'm not mad at this. <laughs> they you should be saying me. Oh, my God. If you a Latino, bro. If you have if, white, if you should not be allowed to say the whole word. I don't care if it's E-R or G-A at the end. You should have to say nig. And that's it. Man, I'm with you, but since I moved to New York, I kind of had to bend to that rule because when in Rome and there's so many, exactly. like, Latin people here right. and even Asian people out here saying, nigga, that I can't really do anything about. But move, prior to moving here, like, that would never happen in Maryland. Man, Puerto Ricans in New York say, nigga. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Mexicans in L.A. say, nigga. That's, it's... If if, if 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 Drake can't yeah, say if Drake can't say nigga then let's we gotta let's really put the rules in place yeah. to who can't say it. I'm actually not mad if we do though because couple. I'm but she can I say something? You know what makes it worse? Why um they're painting Drake as a white boy? Because when Pusha T exposed him with the blackface stuff, this looks more. I don't even think the thing about. We don't want to hear you say nigga no more. It's just because it's just funny. You don't, it ha yeah, exactly. And you just don't have the cultural background. That's that's all it's it's saying. And by the way, Kendrick said it in the song. He was like, "I don't like when you say nigga." And then he goes, "It ain't even that deep." You know what I'm saying? It's just something that he personally doesn't like. It's cringeworthy to him. I respect him for saying that. After seeing that clip of Drake saying it the way he says it, I don't really like it either. I gotta see that clip. Uh, let, me, let me. I like this record a lot. He starts off. <laughs> By playing Richard Pryor from The Wiz backwards. Uh, Richard Pryor, this is when he gets exposed. And he's like, everything you saying about me is true. I like that. And I like, I, like, I like the little Easter eggs people are putting in music because yeah. they know that we live in an era where folks are going to digest every word. I wish y'all had this back in the day when Missy Elliott did that. Because I still don't know what the fuck she was talking about. But 
I thought they said what it was already. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Oh, is that backwards? Backwards. Oh, okay. And then you know, I love how Kendrick starts it off nice and subtle, right? Here's yeah. the thing about this record. These aren't raps. This is a psychological yes. analysis of a man. And not just a man, a man who Kendrick Lamar feels hasn't grown up. Hasn't grown up, hasn't grown as an artist, hasn't grown as a man. He even has a line in the song where he goes, I know you the boy, but I ain't seen the man yet. Yeah. That right there lets you everything. He, he could have he started that off in the beginning and let you know, uh, you know where he's going with the direction of his record. Go back to the top, Taylor. Go back to the top. Go back to the, begin, the very top. Them superpowers getting neutralized. I can only watch in silence. The famous act that we once knew is looking paranoid and now is spiraling. How many people do we know that we look at that are late 30s, 40 plus years old, and you can look at them spiraling? Like you can see it. You see it when they do interviews. Yeah. You see it when they on a podcast. You see it when they doing goofy shit on social media. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with this person? Mm. Like that is a, a astute observation from a man who has a much more healed perspective than, than the person he's talking about. Then he says, you're moving just like a degenerate. Every antic is feeling distasteful. Calculate. You're not turn, make it bigger, Taylor. Cause I can't see. I calculate. You can, no. You're not as calculated. Yes. I can even predict your angle. Mm. Fabrication stories on the family. Cause you heard Mr. Morale. I love this line. The reason I love that line, cause Kendrick is saying y'all ain't got you really. You don't got shit on me. Remember, I was on the podcast saying, what are you gonna say about Kendrick Lamar? Because Kendrick Lamar is literally all about the music. He's not on social media giving up his personal life. Yeah. So what can you say about him? Cause he's f almost flawless as an MC. So he was like. You're lying based on stories I told you on Mr. Morale. Mm. You're lying about stuff. A pathetic master manipulator. I can smell the tales on you now. You're not a rap artist. You a scam artist. Talking to him like he Nigerian with the hopes <laughs> of being accepted. <laughs> this line is so hard. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU never has been in your collection. You never been for us by us. You not for us by us. Yeah. God damn. That was good. I make music that electrify him. You make music that pacify him. That's, that's a bar. That's another bar. That's a bar. That's another bar. I make music that actually means something. You make music for the dummies. Well, I can double down on that line, but spare you this time. That's random acts of kindness. Know you a master manipulator and habitual liar too, but don't tell no lie about, about me, me and I won't tell no truth about you. you. That's nah, old he, grandma talk. That's, old, that's yeah, old black grandma that was, talk. <laughs> that's old black grandma from the South talk. Don't tell no lie about me and I won't tell truth about you. Now, what's this random acts of kindness line? People keep saying that meant something. That's crazy. So, Why? Right. So pacify him could be a double entendre for Drake allegedly being with younger women. Why do y'all keep saying Drake dates young girls? Where is this shit coming from? Because when he like liked well, some actress who happened to be, I think, 17 at the time. It was uh, you can't was like it a Lotto, no, I it mean, was Lotto's sister. That that's when it she's all 21. Comes. No, no, it was the actress. The, she's the still, from, oh, from Euphoria? She ain't grown. Yeah, that's you won't let your 21-year-old daughter date Millie a 40 Millie Bobby Brown. Girl. Drake ain't 40. Oh. What is he? 40. Something Bobby Brown? What was it? I can't hear. Millie Bobby Brown. Oh, Lily How Bobby old Brown. Is Drake? She you was know what? I don't even five, care what three. this man do and who he wanted to date. But what I do want to say is that I agree with you. I like how the tempo of the record is calm. Calm. Like, because I was nervous after uh, Push Ups and then the AI record just because it was good. Yep. It, it was really good. And then my thing was like, dang, how does Kendrick even attack this? So I'm thinking, okay, he got to come with a hit record. Because like that, it's a hit record. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Kendrick has to do that again. Yeah. But I like that he went in a completely different approach. And we said on this podcast, he can't sound angry. And we said that. He, we was like, yo, he cannot sound angry. But not only did he but not he sound angry, angry like that. everything made me laugh. Like, every bar, I'm laughing as I'm listening to this. Like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. By the end of it, I'm like in tears laughing. Like, but, this but, shit is funny. But you have to do that nowadays because of the era we in. Sadly, your music has to, your music has to turn into a, 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 a your music has to take on a life of its own. Yeah. Meaning that once you put certain things out, people need to be able to get their content off. Mm -hmm. Can I go on a podcast and talk about this, you know, for a couple of hours? Can I turn this into memes? Yeah. Can I make this into witty captions? Yep. He he did that. Because I'm telling every half-breed I know, 
I don't want to hear you say nigga no more. more. In fact, even light skinned people, I'm telling you, what? I don't want to hear you say nigga no more. <laughs> There's certain people, I, I've used that term at least two or three times a day. I, I see people say things that I don't like, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to hear that person say Ooh, nigga. You said that to today. Don't worry about it. But I definitely, I definitely said it today. I saw somebody talk. Oh. I saw a clip of an interview, You're so and I was shady. like, I don't want to see that person say <laughs> nigga no so more, shady. yo. Like, let's go, Taylor. What else we gonna see? Let's see. What is that? Okay, now the beat changes, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't like this part that much, so I thought it was necessary. I don't even know what the fuck that means. I like it. I like it because yeah. it's uh, cinematic. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 I reach it. Shoes, it really is cinematic. How is it The BBB was like, a head catch it. <laughs> he's like, he's taking you to another gear. The only thing that scared me about that part is I swear I was like, here come Baby Keem. I was yeah, like, right. I do not want to hear that nigga right now. <laughs> not Baby Keem. And I like Baby Keem, like but Baby I don't want to hear that. I swear, I was like, if Baby Keem starts this shit off, I'm going to be so fucking mad. <laughs> I was like, please, not right now, Kendrick. But Leave your cousin at home in this add, moment. He want to add him. Not huh? to this. this one got not to this. Him. I just didn't know. Yeah. You know, he was, he was sneaking Baby Keem on these records. I'm like, not right now. Yeah. Now, Kendrick. <laughs> And said, go ahead. Another point is that he dropped it on YouTube. You know, like this didn't go straight yeah, to DSP. Oh, really? So I, I kind of fuck with that because it's like you don't have to. Non-traditional routes still matter. Yeah, and, and yeah. still count. Like you don't got to do the politics because I know people are saying that Drake and Kendrick are signed to the same label yeah. and that they're dealing with politics internally. We're trying to get things through, but it's like Kendrick dropped that on his official YouTube page, and I got it. Instantly. Well, I think he did that because he could control the time. I don't know if this is true, but everybody was saying he dropped it at 8.24 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that true? I don't know. I didn't pay no I attention. Say, so that's Co- he, that was for Kobe Bryant. I don't know if that's said. true. You know, the internet runs and says any damn thing. <laughs> yeah. So if he did that, he can control that. I don't know if you can necessarily control that on DSPs. R, and I don't think people will notice the time if it drops on a DSP. True. But he starts off, he says, yeah, I'm out the way. Yeah, I'm low. Okay. Yeah, the island right here is remote. Okay. I ain't thinking about no reaper, nigga. I'm reaping what I sow. Okay. I don't need genius, Taylor. I don't want to know any facts. I want to go off my <laughs> interpretation <laughs> of these records. Okay. Right. This, this, I, the reason I like this is because he said, I ain't thinking about no reaper. So all right, I ain't thinking about death. Yeah. He said, I'm reaping what I sow. Okay. I don't even know what that means, but it feels like he's taking accountability Mm -hmm. for whatever he's about to say, for whatever he's about to do, for whatever he's done. He's taking accountability for it. And now I'm about to give you these bars. Sounds like some filler lines to me. No, I think I think he's saying like the life he lives is solid because I'm reaping what I sow. Like, I yeah, I I think yeah, I'm I'm not thinking about death. Like I'm on an island that I'm, I'm low. I'm out the way. Yeah, I'm on this island by myself. I ain't thinking about death. Which means I'm not thinking about nothing negative and I'm reaping what I sow, okay? Meaning I'm at peace. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good with mine because I'm about to tell you how I know you're not good with yours. Mm. I'm about to tell you about all the demons that are disturbing you, (laughs) okay? Got a Benjamin and a Jackson all in my house like I'm Joe. I have no idea what that means. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say that's Andre Benjamin and Michael Jackson. Okay. Yeah. So he's saying he's the dad still, I think. Because Joe is the dad. I'm Joe. I'm Michael. Joe Jackson. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. But who would Joe, who would have been? Click on it. Now I want to see. Exactly. Say, what does Genius say? <laughs> so I think it's a playoff of Joe Jackson and Joe Biden. Interestingly, ben Furthermore, is the title Benjamin of Jackson August. could refer to Benjamin Franklin and Joe oh, yeah, Jackson, that's right, right. whose faces appear on the $100 bill and $20 bill, respectively. This interpretation, scroll up, Taylor. This interpretation would suggest that Kendrick is li- likening himself to 46th president Joe Biden. No, the fuck he's not. All right, never mind. See, that's why I only want to hear That's region. terrible. Yeah, that's common. <laughs> Go back. No, he's not. Go back. Not Go back. Go back. What Go someone back. else said, though. Go back. I don't need to dissect every line. We got to pull up the Twitter uh, investigators. Now, he said Hellcat made his homeboys and them types sell their souls, okay? God damn. You got the type of friends that'll sell their soul for a Hellcat, Drake? Everybody want to be, uh, be a demon until they get chopped by your throwaway. And I might do a show a day. Once a lame, always a lame. Oh, you thought the money, the power, or fame would make you go away? Great line, because we say that all the time. Money and money and fame can't unlame you. Have you ever played? Have you ever? Okay, nigga, let's play. Have you ever walked your enemy down like with a poker face? Have you ever paid five hundred thousand like to an open case? Well, I have and failed at both, but I came out straight. I love this line. I hate when a rapper talk about guns, then somebody die. 
they turn into nuns and hop online like pray for my city. That is so true. You know true. where he got that from, though? He's faking for likes and digital hugs. What? Where is that? Because Drake says some, someone passed away and he says something like that. And I think he was imitating. But that Drake. don't just apply to Drake, though. Everybody does that. Mm. Every single rapper that you know does that. All these rappers that talk to gun talk, all these rappers that talk about violence, as soon as somebody dies, everybody want to pr pray and, and say rest in peace and, you know, we got to stop the violence. That's the craziest shit in the world to me. I saw D1 talking about that and I agree with him. D1 said, you know, you know, it's crazy when he sees all of these rappers talk about killing people, but then you cry when somebody dies. Mm. Why even put that energy out there then? Mm. If you're going to be sad, when it happens, why even put that energy out there? His daddy a killer. Now, who are he talking about? <laughs> who is the daddy? Jay is, it, is it is his daddy daddy? Dennis Bird Graham. Is, Jay is it Jay Prince? Is it Birdman? Oh, sh oh. Is it just the white man? <laughs> oh, wow. Who is his daddy? That's complicated. <laughs> is it the rich baby daddy that Kanye said Drake has? <laughs> who is the kill? Who is the, who is the who is the daddy? Who is the pappy here? Oh my god. He want to be a junior. They must have forgot the shit that they done. This line is so hard. Yeah. Dementia must run in his family, Man, but let it get shaky. I'll park his son. That was that was God hard. damn. That was hard. The very first time I shot me a Drac, or is it a Drake? A Drake. The homie had told me to aim it this way. I didn't point down enough today. I'll show you. I learned from those mistakes. Fire. He letting you know I know how to shoot now. But I know who I'm aiming at. I'm going to hit my target. But it's a contradiction because he was like, yo, let's keep it peaceful and on wax. And now you're talking about shooting gun. literal. This Son, but then this don't even put gum bars in it then. This isn't literal though. But don't put gum bars in it. You might be right. I think that Drake was a play off the fact that his name is Drake also. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You're not wrong, Al. <laughs> he you just know, said it too You're up. right, but I'm 45 and I understand that this is just rap, but I know somebody else may not understand that. But you're right. Somebody had told me that you got a ring, talking about two, the Tupac ring he bought. Oh God, I'm ready to double the wage so I can buy it back. I'd rather do that than let a Canadian nigga make Pac turn in his grave. Cutthroat business, you got shit twisted. What is it, the braids? Nigga, you jealous of my hair? <laughs> Yo, the braids is hilarious. <laughs> is it your, what is it, is it just you? Or is the braids got you acting crazy now? Do you think you are a gangster because you got braids now? Oh Drake? <laughs> I hurt your fi this is This shit is so funny because all of this sounds light skin. What is it? The braids? I hurt your feelings. You don't want to work with me no more. Okay. okay. I like how he said that too. Okay. How he said it, it was You don't want to work with me no more. Okay. It's three goats left. It should be four because Future's up there, but for the sake of the rap, I know he only had to include three. It's three goats left, and I've seen two of them kissing and hugging on stage. They was kissing? They're talking about, they I think they're talking about Beyonce and, and Jay Z. No. Maybe. What? No. Taylor? No. He's talking, what? About, he's talking Dr about these niggas Drake going on Cole. tour together with first person shooters. He said there's it's three ghosts left and I seen two of them kissing. He's just saying, yeah. like, y'all niggas is praising each other every night at the show. Yeah. My God, you so talented. I'm so thankful That's I get to be on stage. But what was they kissing? Like, they wasn't, no, they wasn't kissing. He's just being exaggerative. So, but that's what I mean with the gun bars, too. They wasn't really shooting, and they're not really kissing. Yeah, uh -huh. but don't put gun bars at all. You just said all... Oh, don't people... put gay bars! <laughs> <laughs> if that niggas is... ain't really kissing, don't yeah, let They definitely kiss. wasn't kissing, but the optics... I understand Kendrick's POV on this optic-wise. One black man on stage kissing and hugging each other. Uh, I love him to death, <laughs> and in eight bars... I'll explain that phrase, huh? It's nothing nobody can tell me, huh? I don't want to talk on no celly, huh? Meaning I don't want to talk. You know I got language barriers. Ain't nobody can talk me off the ledge. It's no accent you can sell me. Yeah, Cole and Aubrey know I'm a selfish nigga. The crown is heavy. I pray they're my real friends. If not, I'm YNW Melly. Ooh. God damn. Yeah, that was crazy. Poor YNW Melly. That shit is going to be used against him in the court of law. <laughs> <laughs> Kendrick said he did it. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> Jesus Kendrick did Christ. not say he did that. He definitely he did. did. This is, that's absolutely but saying he did it. But they're not going to put the two together like He that. might be huh? just referencing the record, not no, the court case. No, he's, no, he's no, talking he about the court case. Like, what he's uh, talking about. Now, explain right, right. this to me. I don't like you popping shit at Pharrell. When did Drake pop shit at Pharrell? Uh, I don't know. For him, I inherit the beef. Just four months after Pharrell was made. Just four months after Pharrell was made, the men's creative director for Louis Vuitton replacing the previous director of the late Berger Ablo, Drake makes it seem as though the company has become 
antiquated and unpopular. He also notes that he scrapped the chain designed by Skateboard P. Fans noted that Drake mm -hmm. sported a chain made by Pharrell in the official music video for his November 2022 track, Jumbotron Shit Poppin'. If it was indeed melted down, it would be extremely disrespectful to Pharrell that Drake destroyed one of his pieces of art. Ew. And okay. it's all because he's with Pusher. Okay. All right. Oh, that's why. Okay. Oh, okay. That I'm makes assuming. sense. So D &D. Kendrick says, fuck all that. Pushing P. Let me see you push it. T. Oh, I love that bar. You better that off. Wasn't you that wasn't that hard. Better no, I do love that bar. That, was, that, 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 was that wasn't bar. that hard. And it's the way he delivered it. Come you see, on, you're pushing man. P. Nah, that was a hard bar because you got to think. Fuck all that pushing P, right? Yeah, you push it on Pharrell. Mm -hmm. Let me see you push a T because you backed away from that nigga. Okay. You ran I, from that strap. It's the delivery okay? in it, too. You gave us Duppy, but Duppy was 70, 80% about, you know, Kanye. Mm -hmm. yeah. That little 20% you gave us about Pusha, Pusha handed you your ass. He did. Okay? He did. I'll give him that. You better off. Pusha got that. I love this line, too. You better off spinning again on him. You think about pushing me. He's Terrence Thornton. He's Terrence Thornton, which is Pusha T's real name. I'm Terrence Crawford, and I'm whooping your feet. Yeah, I'm a little short nigga. <laughs> I'm gonna beat them goddamn toes up. I'm gonna beat those motherfucking toes up. I'm gonna whip on those corns, Aubrey. Now you on hear the me? Corn. Okay. I ain't like that luck. I love it. <laughs> we ain't gotta get personal. This is a friendly fade. You should keep it that way. I know some shit about niggas that make Gunna wanna look like a saint. Now, uh, this that one was. Oh. That one hit. It's a great line. That one. Why hit. is that not a great line, Alex? No, I'm just saying the contradiction. Like, oh we're goodness. friends. We should keep this friendly. He says up there, oh, I hope we're friends. And then two lines later, he's going to be like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Which one is it? Well, it's, it's listen. Probably both. Life nah, is, come on. Yeah. Alex, life is complicated. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yeah, it's probably both. Y'all be reaching for this nigga. It's crazy. It's right? Human, human right, beings Alex. are complicated. Like, you, you're telling me that in the span of a conversation, you can't go from angry to, to, to sad. You can go to, to angry to sad, but you can't say, oh, I pray that he's my friend, and then I hate you in lying. the same line. We got to stop lying. This is why I don't have no problem saying I hate somebody. Because I got to feel my feels, my therapist says. So we be lying on stuff. Like, y'all pray for him. Y'all pray for that person. You know what I mean? You don't mean that shit. Man, fuck him. I don't even like that dude, oh Joe. I don't like that girl. She need to fucking grow the fuck up. It's okay to say these things. And then after you get it out, then you come right back around and be like, but I pray for them, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, he's going. He's going the opposite. Yo, Alex looks so disgusted with <laughs> that, with that response. Now, like, what, 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 is, what is he saying here? Is he saying that Which one? he knows some things about people? God damn it, Taylor, go back. That if he it's start, like, stop going to genius. I don't care about other people. Saying, he said, I know what some shit is. about niggas that make gonna wanna look like a saint. So he's saying he knows some things that if he starts talking, it'll make gonna wanna look like a saint. Mm -hmm. Or is he saying that? He's saying he knows things about Drake. He's essentially saying Drake's a snitch. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. So it's either Drake is a snitch or Kendrick is saying, I know some things that if I get to talking, yeah. I'll make Gunna look like a saint. That's what he said. Wait, He's go like, back. He knows about some sure crimes probably that have some been committed. I know so some if shit If I got to talking, I would look like a crazy Y'all got to stop calling Gunna a snitch too, man. Mm -hmm. I, I really think y'all be doing Gunna wrong with that because if, if Young Thug ain't say nothing yet, y'all got to stop doing that to Gunna. And salute to Gunna because Gunna ain't listening to none of y'all. Gunna is in that gym and Gunna got sexy on you hoes. You hear me? <laughs> Okay? God. I don't think that, but I'm just saying... <laughs> Clearly you do. Tell. I'm saying that the man is in shape is you, what I'm There's saying. two girls in the room and you're the one saying it. <laughs> this ain't about... This ain't been about critics, not about gimmicks, not about who the greatest. It's always been about love and hate. Now, let me say I'm the biggest hater. I love that. You know why I love that? Because I am an OG veteran Drake hater. But I'm objective with my hate. You know what I'm saying? When Drake does some shit I like, I give him props. But I've been an OG veteran Drake hater. I don't even know why. But Kendrick gave me some reasons. I hate the way that you walk. The way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I Yo. hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's going to be direct. I feel like he got that from when DMX was on Breakfast Club back in the day. That's what everyone was saying. You know, uh, that's when... Man. And when you was hype as hell, too. Hyping DMX You up. was hype. Hype. I, that's what I... Because <laughs> I thought I was the only one. <laughs> it feels good to know you're not the only one. Now, 14 years later, all of y'all want to be Drake haters. I don't even want to be a Drake hater no more because all of y'all want to be Drake well, haters. It was fun to be a Drake hater back Kendrick then. Kendrick said he's doing this for the culture. Everybody feels like this. This is great. We hate the bitches you fuck because they confuse themselves with I real like that women. Line. Yeah, that was a good line. Uh, I saw my guy Isaac Hayes the third. He posted, what does that line even mean? It's easy. All of these women 
who he calls B words think that they're real women and they're not yet. Why can't they be real women? You said and they what? They, they, don't, they got BBLs yeah, and they got fake about. everything uh, and they're probably fake about. people and they don't really have the morals and the values and the integrity of real women. Yeah. If I got to tell you what a real woman is, Alex, you ain't never met one. No, but what happened with Stan with black women? Like, you, he's, he shooting, he's shooting at a lot of women right now. We don't know Drake what gotta, these bitches are. I mean, this we, is a very colorist, racist oh, record. He used the B okay. word. Y'all caught that? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what color these women are. Yeah, but we know the women that Drake has been with. We know a lot of them. No, we yeah, know. I think that he raps about every single one. Remember in, in Humble, he's like, "I'm so fucking sick and tired of the Photoshop. Show me something natural yeah, like right. Afro and right. Richard Pryor." So That's his right. whole thing is, I think, was that he BBL bitches. And listen to what he said. We and notice I said BBLs, we, man. it's not just me. I'm what the culture feeling. So he's basically saying the whole culture feels like this. And he ain't really wrong. We was in Magic City Saturday looking around like, yo, where the natural? <laughs> but where you, the natural? But you at? had all the fake ones in your section, though. I'll tell you. That's all that was in there. Yeah, 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 I should have like, threw fake money. Yeah, some real ones. <laughs> yo, not fake money. <laughs> no, there was some real ones. Yeah, in there. Like, there was some real ones in there. There was some real ones in there. There was a, there was a beautiful sister in there, dark skin, big natural hair, all that. By the way, this isn't BBL shaming. Yeah, I are BBL shaming. And crazy. I want to say it's not BBL shaming, themselves. but I think we're just trying to encourage other things because BBLs are so prominent and yeah. because fake is so prominent. Like, people think that is the new standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think it's confusing other women. Yeah. Like, I get that. Yeah, but that's I'm gonna not tell you the only representation. And if you think BBL looks stupid in clothes, boy, you gotta see it naked. It look dumber. <laughs> okay? It looks I dumber. Look dumber. <laughs> How many more fairy tale stories about your life till we've had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel that you're black enough? That's Wait, like a that double was, entendre. That, that was great. That was a really great one because everybody always says Drake chooses a new person for like hood validation. So it'd be like, all right, the little baby. Mm. Then it. That's yo, great. people always say that. They say <laughs> he does that. He tags team with people for. The hood crash. But, I don't mind but that. now that's a negative thing. He's yeah, the I, bigger artist. He's giving all I, these young no, people a look. I don't think it's a negative so, thing, but they're in a war right now, so it's funny. I feel you, but <laughs> he's trying to turn a good thing into a negative thing, which is... I didn't say you love Drake. I didn't say you love Drake. 20, Damn. 21 Savage is a rap superstar right now because of Drake. There's a lot yeah, of people no, that are people rap superstars are because benefiting. of Drake. And I thought, I thought Kendrick would have done that for Kodak because of the last album. Mm -hmm. And I actually do think Kendrick could have done that for Kodak if Kendrick would have done an album with Kodak instead of Baby Keem. Mm -hmm. I like the album. I like the album with Baby Keem. But if he would have done something like that with Kodak in that moment, mm -hmm. I feel like Kodak would have took off the way 21 did uh 21 did too. So you're saying Kendrick don't got don't the Midas touch right? 21 has <laughs> yeah. why? 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 I hate Kendrick so I don't hate Kendrick. I'm just saying he's Kendrick saying definitely that got like... the Midas touch. Baby Keem is a star. 21 not also has a 21. way lighter. Uh, not as big as 21. 21 doesn't have the same like sh rap sheet as Kodak. People were on his body off the street. I mean, I played Kodak one time and somebody came up to me like, are you serious as a woman? And I was like, oh, really? I can't play Kodak? <laughs> so I don't know. Oh my only God. Be <laughs> only because of that. You. Yeah, they said, as a woman? I'm like, damn. I love when Kendrick says this. <laughs> I mean, Kendrick says, I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he act tough. I've been saying for years, I don't like, I, I, I say I don't like when Drake sings. I like when he raps. I've been saying, when Drake did that video back in the day, I don't even remember what video it was. It was when he had the hoodie on and the headlines and it looked like they was all like a flash mob that was going to run up in a store and yeah. steal every goddamn thing. Headlines. Like they just couldn't wait to run up in H&M or something and just take everything <laughs> off the H &M. fucking shelf. Like that's what, that, that, I didn't like that either. You're going to make a nigga bring back Puff. Let me see if Chubbs really crashed something. That's a reference to when... Uh, I don't... Yeah, I didn't get it. They said Puff slapped him, right? Well, Puff allegedly slapped oh, okay. Drake. Um, I'll never forget that night either. You were I, there? No, I woke oh. up and my phone was ringing. I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I can say this without a shadow of a doubt, and this is true. They're, the industry is, behind the scenes, they've always been against Drake. Like, they've always actively rooted against Drake. Why? I do not know. Probably just because he's from Canada and he's winning. Probably because he's from Canada and, you know, he's not 
I, he's probably because he's not American. I don't know. Like, I don't think that's it. Yo, Drake used to say this in his raps, and he used to talk about the industry plotting him against him. He was not lying. I'm not even going to sit there and tell you no lie. Because whenever stuff like this used to happen to him, my phone would go crazy. Well, who the and, fuck is the and, industry? And it wouldn't be like regular people. It'd be like execs and like managers and shit like that. Like, yo, yo, you would, yo, 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 Diddy just slapped the shit out, Drake. I'm like, really? And I'll never forget that night. So he's not, he's not, he's not. Drake's not paranoid when he says these things. I just feel like why and who would be behind it if the industry is benefiting off of him? All right, listen. I, yeah, they, hate is hate, 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 is hate jealousy, bro. and envy is a real thing, yeah. yo. He says, let me see if Chubbs really crashed something. He said, I mean, let me see if Chubbs really bought that life, right? right. Uh, yeah, my first one, first album, Good Kid, Mad City, like my last one, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, it's a classic. Nah. You don't have one. Does that narrative still stand? No, I thought that was cat. That's what's okay. two, two lies, right? That was, okay, that talk was to me. Cap. What's the Drake classic? Yeah, what's the classic? Well, the fan favorite is Take Care, followed by Nothing Was the Same. Okay. Yeah. And then there also, if you want to do rap classic, if you're reading this, it's too late. Yes. he Drake got three certified classics. Really? Yes. And Mr. Morale was not a classic. Let's stop that. Mr. Morale. Yeah, it was not a classic. Oh my oh, God, Alex! Yeah, you hate Drake. It's a good album. It's a good album. I've told y'all. You hate Kendrick. No, it's it's good good album, album. Told, you hate Kendrick. That's in the all. future, it's going to be considered that and 4 for 4 going to be considered the most important hip hop albums of all time. You're not healed yet, Alex. Yeah, you're still good. <laughs> you're not <laughs> healed yet. I, Alex, I agree with 4 for 4. Healed yet. Look at you, Tim. You got on Tim's. You got on Tim's with bell bottom denim jeans. You're not healed yet. I'm comfortable. You're not healed. You got a sweatsuit on. I'm healed. No, but. I'm healed. I'll say some albums. Healing. Some albums you just got to be ready for. Like, I feel like yeah. when Solange's The Seated at the Table first dropped, I wasn't ready for it. But then there was a point in my life where the album really hit me. I and would I say understand that. the significance of it. I would it. agree so with that. I think that. Mr. Morale is going to be one of those projects, too. Yes. So it'll probably age kind of like To Pimp a Butterfly. Absolutely. Yeah. And even some people still don't like To Pimp a Butterfly. Classic, you know? my but, favorite Kendrick album. You yeah. know my favorite Drake album? Honestly, never mind. Wow. He's lying. Honestly, oh, never okay. mind. He's, he's being shady. <laughs> Honestly, never mind is my favorite Drake album ever. It's number one Drake album. Uh, Fantastic. Why are you saying uh, that? I just think it's great. Name three songs you like off there. Honestly, <laughs> never. Ain't mine. Ain't mine. Yeah, exactly. Listen, um, I yeah. think views. No, I like, I like views a lot too. I love views. Honestly, no, you don't even know any know. songs off the project. <laughs> Yo, what? It's a great album. It's a great album. You know, I like that album. Nobody else liked it. Um, <laughs> let your core audience stomach that, then tell me where you get your abs from. Okay, that's the classic. That's the classic joke about Drake having plastic surgery on his abs. B12, it's a fast one. Bow, bow, bow. Lil Keem did that. Baby Keem did that. Headshot for the year. You better walk around like Dab Punk. Scroll up, Taylor. Um, okay, and then it goes into what? Another verse. Oh, another verse. Okay, remember. I love this. This is why okay, I love this. A Top Dog, who the fuck they think they playing with? I love this because I don't know why people thought that Top and Kendrick weren't necessarily fucking with each other. I guess because, you know, neither one of them said anything. Kendrick went and started PG Lang, whatever, whatever. You don't know the situation. But you got to think, just think, that Top Dog and Kendrick's relationship got to be deeper than rap. Yeah. Right. And just because an artist fulfills his obligation, you know, contractually and goes off to do something else, that don't mean that's still not your people, people. especially the way y'all all heard Duckworth. Y'all all know the, the history between Top and Kendrick Pops and like that. That's got to mean something in a real, real, real way. So you got to know people like Top Dog ain't going to. Um, Ain't gonna play by Kendrick Lamar. And I, 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 when I heard Drake throwing Top's name around that, because let's be for real, y'all don't be, you don't be hearing Top name in records unless it's somebody from Top Dog saying it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yes, saying? <laughs> Negroes don't be just throwing around Top Dog name in any way, shape, or form. So, I mean, that was a good move by Drake to doing a record because it makes everybody think like, damn, does Top and Kendrick have beef? Yeah. But clearly they don't because Top Dog tweeted out something to the extent of, we have been we seen all y'all niggas. And you know, we, been, we, 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 we let everybody show their hand. Kendrick is still the king. TDE. Mm -hmm. Boom. Fire. Extortion my middle name as soon as you jump off that plane, bitch. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> Yo, why you say bitch like that? This is what people forget about Los Angeles, California. 
Yeah. It's Los Angeles, California. Okay. I know the beautiful weather and the great weed and the beautiful women will fool you, but that is one of the most tricky places on planet Earth. It is a place that should always be motherfucking respected. Mm -hmm. You don't go to L.A. on no bullshit. And I ain't telling y'all that y'all got to check in and all of that. I'm just telling you when you go to L.A., mind your motherfucking business. Because mm -hmm. these Negroes from Watts to Compton to, the, to, to, to Crenshaw, they don't play. Yeah. So he, he's letting Drake know extortion my middle name as soon as you jump off that plane if I want it to be. Oh, no. Because who they playing with, top dog? <laughs> who they playing with? That's not tough talk. That is, I am a good kid from a mad city and I know mad niggas. <laughs> <laughs> is that not tough talk? That ain't yeah, tough talk. That's, that's tough talk. That's right. I will call all my cousins. That's tough talk. Brothers. Not all my I know. cousins. I'm just letting you know. It's, it's not tough talk. So, I'm just letting you know it can crazy, happen. Yo. I'm allergic to the lame shit only you like being famous. Love it. Love it. Because Kendrick's saying, I'm not Hollywood, bro. I'm not Hollywood. I'm not trying to be Hollywood. It's obvious Kendrick is not trying to be Hollywood. The man don't even be on social media. He drops an album every four to five years. He's not walking down, you know, Rodeo Drive. He's not calling paparazzi to take pictures of him and him and his people. Like, he don't do that. He's walking around New York in fake Jordans, okay? Trying not to be seen. Like, like he's not trying to be famous in no way, shape, or form. That's not his That's not his thing. Drake, that's your thing. You like that shit. I don't like that lame shit. Now, Yachty can't give you no swag neither. I don't give a fuck about who you hang with. That's you hanging out with them young boys. You hanging out with people like young y y Yachty. You should, be a, you should be above that at this point. Thanks. Like that. Like, yeah, yeah, I can understand, you know, being inspired a little bit, but you shouldn't be walking around here looking like little Yachty. At all. At, at this stage of your life. At, and that's How no shade. Oh, no shade to Yachty, because Yachty None. does. Yachty is Yachty. Hits. Yachty writes hits. Yachty's a 20 yeah, something does. year old kid. Yachty is Yachty is moving the way a 20 something year old should move. But not a 30 Drake plus at his caliber. Year old. No. Yeah. And I love how after he says that, he brings it right back to I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk, I hate the way that you dress. Not you hate that. I mean, not you love that. Surprise <laughs> you wanted that feature request. Oh, Drake, you reached out to me because you wanted me to be on first person shooter. Nah, I'm not doing it because we got some shit to address. I even hate when you say the word nigga, but that's just me, I guess. Oh, I got the video. <laughs> Let me see the video. Let's add, I need to add this. Let me see this video that you keep talking about. Yes. Let me see. Let me see. I was just saying. Well, I'm just saying. Like, let me hear, let me hear. <laughs> at one point, it was somebody that I was like, I used to see out and be like, yo, that's that nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing. He opened. It just sort of, it bugged me, man. It, it bugged me because it was like somebody I looked up to at one point. It was somebody that I was like, I used to see out and be like, yo, that's that nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing. He open. Yeah, I don't want to see you say nigga no more. Yo, that ER is crazy. And the fact you ain't got no facial hair, you look like you ready to raid the Capitol. I'm not even going to lie to you. you look at, that shit look wild. What year was that? That um, shit looks crazy. This is Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I know you, man. Some shit just cringeworthy. It ain't even got to be deep, I guess. And he's right. It ain't that deep. Even though I've said, on record, all biracial should only say nig. You can't say nigga. You can't say nigga. Just nig. <laughs> That's it. You're half black. Keep it at nig. Still love when you see success. Everything with me is blessed. Kendrick means none of this. This is me when I say I'm praying for people when I don't even really mean it. I wish you the best. Still, I love you when you see success. Everything with me is blessed. I love this part. Keep making me dance, waving my hand, and it won't be no threat. He's basically telling Drake, this is what you're good for. Tap dancing? <laughs> no, you're good for just making people dance, mm. which, is a, which is great, cool. But you're not giving nobody anything deep. Nah, this one, it gets really crazy. I know and they call you the boy, but where is a man? Because I ain't seen him yet. Matter of fact, I ain't even bleed him yet. Can I bleed him? Bet. See, that one line sets up how I'm about to cut you even deeper. Mm. Okay? Mm. Yeah, you call yourself the boy, but where's the man? Mm. You ain't grown as a you ain't grown as an artist, Drake. You ain't grown as a man. You still out here doing little, little boy shit. You still got the fucking barrettes in your hair. The barrettes is killing me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you, like what the, did you? I'm sorry, doing? Alex. The nail the polish shit is killing me. The nail polish. The nail polish. Nail polish. Nail polish. Nail you know what I mean? <laughs> why can't niggas just do that? Why are you like, gonna be why, a bad bitch so bad? But why are you so concerned <laughs> with what other people are doing? Like.
Are you serious right yeah. now? Yeah. I'm just not into it. I just think it's different. <laughs> Why are you looking out to I, the like, <laughs> Because I, it, I think it's just different, <laughs> different, different things for different people. Women, yeah, exactly. You know what? Back in the day, guys, and I, 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 I arched my eyebrows at one point in my life. No. At one point in my life, when I was younger. They're, they're fuck, fuck, fuck I out of here. So you sure didn't know that. I was a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know why I arched my eyebrows? Because a woman told you to. Nina and Shamara, we used to work together. Salute to Nina and Shamar. Love y'all for life. We was working at Paragon Solutions in uh, Goose Creek, like South Carolina. <laughs> and they told me that I had amazing eyebrows, which I do, as you can see. Oh, okay? They said, you got amazing eyebrows. They like Tupac. You should arch them. I said, really? Mm. Tupac arches his eyebrows. I didn't know what an arch was, right? Mm. Go to the barbershop. Yo, arch my eyebrows. Bob looks at me crazy. Like, arch your eyebrows? He's like, yeah, I want to arch my eyebrows. Arch your eyebrows? And he's like, all right. So he arched my eyebrows. They mad, thin and shit, looking crazy Wait. as fuck. Yes. Crazy as I fuck. I wish we got a picture. And then, so, and then no. there was a G unit mixtape. There was a there was a there was a G unit mixtape that came out, and G unit mixtape was like, the next nigga we see out here with arch eyebrows, we smacking the shit out of him. <laughs> so I had some homies that used to they used to call my phone and just play that. <laughs> and just hang up. <laughs> they would call my phone and just play that that clip from the G unit mixtape and hang up. That's my funny. point with saying all of that, Alex. Look, Alex. Why is that up there? Yeah. Hold on, so if you Google that, that, that comes up to you? Oh, yes. this is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Why is this up? Ah, damn. Who posted that? <laughs> Wait, back out. Who posted crazy. that? Yo, you yeah, was a crazy. bad bitch, y'all. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Bad bitch if I was getting dissed in the diss record, that is the one. <laughs> <laughs> That is the one. McDonald's eyebrows, arch ass nigga, <laughs> golden arch ass face nigga. God. Wait, this ain't your prom? Look at the hairline though. The hairline was dead. <laughs> yeah. I had a hairline. Yeah, you did. Were you I, at prom? Yeah, that was a prom. <laughs> Why are you talking about your hairline? <laughs> Get that Yo, shit out men the and their hairline is hilarious. <laughs> the reason I brought that up, Alex, is because you have two women in the room who are looking at you and they're all thinking about 90s gay slurs. Yeah, so I what I'm trying to tell you is, you're, we used to do things for the women. I did it for the, I arched my eyebrows because some women told me it looked mm. good. And then when I had them arch, girls would be like, oh, your arch is nice, a nice you, got some, you got a nice arch, right? Why do you have your nails painted? My fiance does nails as a hobby. She and wants you to get them. Exactly. No, she actually, no, she, I swear to God. It was, it was wait, actually wait. hers, it was actually her idea. Really? Yeah. Cause and now it's something we do together. Go like this. And it's something me. I got uh cars. She tested you, on. yo. That's like, actually cute. She testing you. That's like when a such nah, like, man, she that's likes like when you and a girl fucking. And I and like she, it. No, that's like when you and a girl fucking and she go to put her finger in your ass. Nah. She wanna see if you flinch or that. <laughs> yo, this one. This one. It's homophobia. You just take it, like, it's crazy. If you just take it, she like, damn, I got one of them. Well, but, you know, <laughs> I think like but I just like what I like. And why can't people just be secure with liking what you I like? Think you're just a, you. I think you're just a little more on the creative side. I chopped that up to that. But no, I'm going to say you wouldn't be a bad bitch. Damn. Damn. I'm with you. Okay? <laughs> but that's all the reasons I'm saying that, you know, he shouldn't be trying to be like a little yachty. Now, he says, should I bleed him yet? Oh, when I see ooh. you stand by Sexy Red, I believe you see two bad bitches. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> that was funny. I believe <laughs> you don't real. like women. It's real competition. You might pop an ass, ass with him. Now let's dissect this line a little bit. <laughs> then that ass over. Let that Gucci breathe. What do, what do y'all hear as women when y'all hear that line? I believe you don't like women. It's real competition. You might pop an ass with him. Yeah, I didn't get that. Oh, I thought he was right. saying that he be like, been that ass for Drake, not been that ass for me. That's one. I think that he saw the Justin Richburg meme. Remember when Justin Richburg did the meme where he had Drake come knock... Six or sexy red, oh. I start popping his ass. Mm -hmm. But also, this reminds me of a line. I've heard a lot of women tell me over the years that there's a lot of men who like pussy but don't like women. Yeah. Uh, I they that. like pussy but don't like women. Meaning they like having sex and they like fucking, but they don't actually have a respect mm. for women. Wow. You know what I mean? Like they they that that's that's what I feel like he was saying with this line because you know there's always been the rumors, you know, not rumors, but there's been uh think pieces written about Drake's misogyny and yada yada yada, and they talk about how he, you know, I don't want I don't know if I would say attacks, but he'll put certain women on blast in their records. So this is what Kendrick is well, saying. He ain't the only one who been doing that. I agree. Him and his little tag team, Evil Twin, that they no longer friends. He does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking about? Future. The GOAT? <laughs> yeah, goat? he's a GOAT, but he does it. Drake's think... a GOAT, too. Who does yeah, it? He is. He is. It's a maturity true, though, thing. Drake. I think Drake likes women, though. I don't know. I'm just saying that's what I get from this line. He They're said... saying like he doesn't like women in the sense of respect. 
I know, I know, uh, but I don't, I don't really. I will say though, if he stands by Sexy Red and sees two bad bitches, what's wrong with that? Exactly. <laughs> no. Exactly, you want to be a bad I'm, bitch. I'm joking, that Men was the joke. to be a bad bitch. <laughs> I think we just have do. to accept that zestiness is in now. Damn. It's not in. Why I gotta be zestiness? Because it is. What, what if I respect the confidence? He got the, the barrettes. No, no, no. He got the barrettes. He got the fingernail. He got the whole package so what, of that y'all, bitch. Y'all feel uh, NLE Chopper? That, his little dance that he's doing now? NLE Chopper's not painting his nails. I ain't see it. I'm just talking about you, the package. Yeah, I definitely he got the abs, it. the eyebrows, the, the nose job, apparently. Nose job? Yeah. Yeah. He got a nose job. Damn. Yeah, now you're shaking ass with sexy red. Then you got the nail polish. Like he got all of the. And there's a clip out probably... there where he's like. So 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 if you're trying to be a woman, why would you not like women? I thought I he mean... was just. I thought he was just trying to call him gay. I think that's too. Yeah. But that's you know I, I don't I don't I don't. I, I... He don't give gay. <laughs> he don't give he gay. Don't give... He don't give gay. I don't know what gives gay anymore. <laughs> You were, you I, don't even, I don't think gay gives gay anymore. <laughs> You're right. I, gay don't even give gay. We, what, like, what is gay? I don't even know what that is anymore. That's true. Uh, let's speak on percentage. Show me a split. I'll make sure I double back with you. Now, all of this he got from Pusha. You were signed to a nigga that signed to a nigga that said he was signed to that nigga. Y'all don't remember the, yep. the Exodus whatever record? That was funny. Like, like a lot of this whole shit is, in, is, is inspired and repurposed things that Pusha T has already said. Mm-hmm. The whole white angle, to me, that's what Ross has been saying yep. the past month. Kendrick is just such a skilled MC. He's such a skilled artist that he's just presenting it in a different way in The Messenger Matters. When Ross did it, it sounded racist, though, because he was like, white boy. He was like gaslighting him. I love Where, it. When Kendrick said it, it was like, you know what? I, I don't like when you do this. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's less racist. It's a culture thing. It actually hits harder the way Kendrick does it because... He's for the culture. and Well, well Ross is for the culture, too, but you just, like, just calling somebody a white boy, it's like, eh. But when you buy racial... Exactly. And, 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 it's a, and it's a person trying to play both sides, it's kind of like the Incredible Hulk. Like that incredible cracker comes out shit sometimes. You know what I mean? Even though you're trying to be black and you're trying to be cracker. of the culture, that incredible cracker just that ER slips yeah, out. Yeah, like when he came at Ross and he told Ross, uh, he said he told his mom, talking about he's being racist. That's the incredible oh, yeah. cracker coming yeah. out you. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Or like sending the cease and desist for like that. I don't record. know if I believe that, but we're getting to that no, right now. No, they showed the. Really? Yeah. Why would he send and say, okay, that's the next line. You try. Try cease and desist on the like that record. Hold oh, what? You ain't like that record? Back to back, I like that record. I'm gonna get back to that for the record, meaning that he's gonna go deeper mm. on the cease and desist, which I would like to hear, because I wanna know why would Drake send a cease and desist about like that? There was nothing even crazy on there. Antoinette, subject regarding radio, future metro. Hey, Becca, per our conversation last week, we are not granting radio rights for like that. Epic does not have the right to release this song at radio. Thanks for your understanding and cooperation. That don't even make no sense. Like, that was number one on for three weeks in a row. That shit plays on the radio all the time. And they all on the same label. Drake ain't on Epic? No, not Epic, but it's all owned by... Universal? Is, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that don't make no sense to me. I don't believe that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get... Why would I call around trying to get dirt on niggas? Y'all think my life is rap? I love this. Because, you know, that's what they've been saying. They say Drake has been calling around trying to get dirt on Kendrick. Because, once again, Kendrick is a flawless MC. Like, there's not much you can say about Kendrick. You have to have things to say. Yeah. Right? So he's calling around trying to get dirt on Kendrick. I don't know if that's true, but that's what Kendrick is saying. Y'all think all my life is rap? No, we don't, Kendrick, because you take five years in between albums. So we know you're living life and you're not spending all your time rapping. That's whole shit. I got a son to raise, but I can see you don't know nothing about that. Waking him up, no, nothing about that. Then tell him to pray, no, nothing about that. Then giving him tools to walk through life like day by day, no, nothing about that. Teaching him morals, integrity, discipline. Listen, man, you don't know nothing about that. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering you don't know nothing about that. Listen to what this man just said. This man said Drake don't believe in God. Okay? <laughs> he said Drake don't believe in God. because if, if you ain't telling your son to pray, that means you ain't praying yourself. He said you're not giving him the tools to walk through life day by day because you don't even have the tools yeah. to walk through life day by day. You haven't been doing none of the work, Drake, which I don't believe because I've heard Drake talk about going to therapy before. I don't know if it's, you know, if he goes a lot, but I've heard him talk about going. Then he says teaching him morals. Integrity, discipline. You don't know nothing about that. 
You can't teach your son what you don't know. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering. When the last time you sat down and thought about what God is considering? I wake up every day of my life and consider what God is considering. I'm not even joking. Every day I pray I for God to guide me every yeah. single day. I think about what God is considering all the time. God cannot bless what you pretend to be. Sure, mm. you should be a like and, and you part-time still preacher. act like the way you do is crazy. <laughs> what do you mean? You should be a part-time. I don't act like the way I do. <laughs> you, I used to act the way I do. That? Huh? You should be a part-time preacher. You have that voice. Well, I don't know what God's taking me. We don't know what God's taking me. Don't you don't know what God's taking me. It's how you say God. It's how you say God. Say yeah. it again. They go 820 <laughs> V1. It's 1 V20. Love this line, too. If I got to smack niggas that write with you. Ain't no 20 versus 1, Drake. It's a 1 versus 20 because you got a whole writing team. Bring sad. them out, too. I'll clean them out, too. Tell Beam that he better stay right with you. Beam is allegedly one of Drake's Writers, producers, I don't fucking know. Oh. Am I battling ghost or AI? Nigga feeling like Joel Osteen. I ain't like that. You could have used the black pastor. You could have said you're feeling like Sarah Jakes Roberts, Kendrick. You could have said you're feeling like Bishop T.D. Jakes. You could have said you're feeling like Torre Roberts. Click on that line. Let me see what Ge Genius says. Yeah, but maybe he was actually in a film called AI. Kendrick responded to Drake's April 2024 diss track, Taylor Made Freestyle, on which he used AI. Okay, we know that. Kendrick mocks Drake's use of this technology in his diss track, going on to ask if he is battling either ghosts or robots. Kendrick's implying that when rap battling Drake, he's either coming up against... Okay, okay. Kendrick then appears to rap Joel Osteen, likely because he is focusing on the rhyme scheme of Austin off him. However, he is actually referring to both, both Joel Osteen and Holly Joel Osment. This may be delivery. Who the fuck is Holly Joel Osment? Mm -hmm. Playing on the idea that he does not know who he is battling. Joel Osteen is a famous pastor from Houston, Texas. Joel has famously been impersonated multiple times, including by AI. And he has also been accused of using a ghostwriter. Really? He's an American actor, Joel. Holly O. Osman is an American actor who starred in the 2001 film AI in 1999, The Sixth Sense. Oh, so that's why the next line he goes, um, go back to it, Taylor. The next line, he goes, funny, he was in a film called AI. Oh, and my sixth sense telling me to off him. Holy shit. <laughs> God damn, Kendrick, you good. I wow. Mean, huh? That's a reach. That is not a reach. He, just, <laughs> if the, the, he says Joel Osteen, but it's Joel Osment that was in the movie AI. Yeah, but he just said that they get confused. So why would he reference the two movies that the guy stars in then? That's what, I think he might have just got the wrong person. Wow. I'm going to blick niggas all in their coffin. Yeah, OVO, OV ho niggas. OV ho niggas is dick riders. Yeah. OV ho is crazy. Yo, y'all be juicing. <laughs> OV ho is crazy. OV ho is definitely OV ho is crazy. <laughs> Suck you an OV ho, Alex. OV ho. OV ho is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Tell them run to America. They imitate heritage. They, heritage. they can't imitate this violence. Oh, my favorite part's coming. What, what do you do, Taylor? What, go and scroll up. So scroll, go down, Taylor. Down, 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 down. Yeah, I like this too, though, because they run to America, but they can't imitate this heritage. So, like, yes, Canada don't have the American culture mm -hmm. that we do, so they are imitating American hip-hop culture in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. What I learned is niggas don't like the West Coast, and I'm fine with it. I'll push the line with it, pick a nigga off one at a time with it. We can be on a three-hour time difference. I don't believe people don't like the West Coast, Kendrick. But I think that a lot of people from the West Coast, because all my homies from the West Coast, I think they say this to themselves just to keep an edge. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, in the 48 Laws of Power, it said if you don't have no enemies, create them. All my West Coast homies, DJ Great. Head, Glasses <laughs> Malone, Letty Martinez, they all feel like don't nobody fuck with the West Coast, which is so not true. Yeah, that's crazy. You know that's not true. Yeah. That's why all everybody moves to LA. They love LA. We yeah. love West Coast music. We grew up off Death Row. We love TDE. We love the West Coast. We love Ice Cube. We love. Friday, we love Minister Society, yeah. we love Boys in the Hood, we love the West, we love Roscoe's, we love the West Coast. <laughs> Cut it out. But they have to say that to themselves because right. it gives them an edge. Taylor, put it back in the right thing here? so I can read it. It's right here. I can't see it. It's, okay, there it goes. All right. Uh, don't speak on the family, Crody. It can get deep in the family, Crody. Talk about me and my family, Crody. Someone gonna bleed in your family, Crody. I'll be at New Hope King eating fried rice with a dip sauce and a blammy, Crody. 
telling me you're cheesing, fam. We can do this right now on the camera, Crody. New hope. What, what is a Crody? That's slang for bro. Yeah. And, oh, Canada, the, Canadian slang, Brody, right? Brody, yeah. but they changed it to C for Crip. But it's oh. Canadian slang slash L.A. slang. And then also the New Ho King part is a Chinese restaurant that Drake got, according to Twitter, that Drake got robbed at. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh. by a local... Oh, uh, let me find it. Oh, word? Yeah. See, this shit is better than Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, that's I, better this than shit, Marvel No, oh, the great. Easter eggs in this shit yeah. is crazy. But there's really. a lot of filler lines, though. Yeah, right here. I don't think they're filler. I think we just have to figure out. We got to dissect them. I don't think there's no bar that doesn't mean something. No, I believe that. So this is on Reddit. The Kendrick Lamar does deeper. We know Kendrick Fry. Yeah, uh, hold on. New Ho King is a Chinese restaurant on Sp Spadina Avenue in Toronto. New Ho King is also a Toronto rapper named Sizlak. Films his last music video before being shot and killed. Oh shit. Sizlak got shot and killed days after dropping a disc record titled Realist in the Six. In the music video for the record, he's at New Ho King. Sizlak is also rumored to be one of the people that robbed Drake at gunpoint in 2009. Drake got robbed in 2009 by two people at gunpoint, and it's been rumored for a long time that one of them was Sis Lack. Also, supposedly, Drake was going to file a police report, but did it because it would affect his rap career being labeled as a snitch. Remember, Kendrick said, I know some shit about niggas that make Gunna want to look like a saint. Damn. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, how is that a diss? He's basically implying that. I mean, I like the whole angle. <laughs> Drake of got his get back. I don't know about that. I like the angle of that's that. What that's where he got robbed. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I tune out when y'all start talking murder. I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. Hey, <laughs> can we get some turn it back thing, Taylor? No, I'm just saying. Go back. Okay, so let's get where we at. Where we at with it? Where we at with it? Scroll up. Up, down to me. Down, 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 down. I loved it. I did not know that Crody was a... Uh, I didn't know. Brody. Oh, I knew Brody. I didn't even catch. I wasn't even paying that shit no attention. But I like that. Tell me you're cheesing, fam. We can do this right now on the camera. Okay. I wave one finger and thump y'all niggas like, mm, field goal punt y'all niggas. They punk y'all niggas. Nobody never took my food. Oh, okay. I see what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He going back to say nobody ever robbed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoever that's fucking with him, fuck you niggas and fuck the industry too. If you take it there, I'm taking it further. Psst, that's something you don't want to do. And that, my friends, was Euphoria, a TV show executive produced by Drake <laughs> on HBO. Ooh, we don't want to hear you say nigga no more. We don't want to hear you say nigga no more. Stop. No more. I like how he ended it with stop. Yeah. Where, where, where are we you can. as far as who's up right now? Are you guys counting the AI track or no? Yes, I am counting the AI track. Well, it got taken down. I'm still counting the AI track. Please still put it out. I think I think it was a moment when I listened back to both records. Push ups hits harder to me than the AI. It was. does. Thank you. So for uh, me, I thought y'all was gonna cap. So, no, no, it does. Oh, okay. For me, I, because the AI record got taken down, I feel like it kind of gave like a blemish on the scoreboard. So I would say, and then how are we doing the rating? Is it record versus record? Who has a better record, or is it we just giving points for ones that we just fucked I, I, I think you should just go off energy. How you feel? Like and we, you, and we got enough music out there now, right? We got. I think you should count like that. I mean, uh, no, nah, I'm not gonna. Only reason I'm not gonna count like this is why I'm not gonna count like that. Like that was the last time that both of them shot at each other on a record. Now. All before it was a lot of subliminals. Even though they were like some blatant, blatant subliminals, there was a lot of subliminals. But like that was more so like, nah, fuck a big three. It's just big me who wants smoke. J. Cole thought he wanted some smoke. He was like, nah, I ain't built for this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not mad at it. His wife side, <laughs> his wife side told him, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. His wife side said, let's get out of here, Jermaine. No, his, his hillside, Mr. Therapy. His wife side said, his wife side, his, said, his, no, his, wife side, his wife side said, Jermaine, please get out the car, Jermaine. Exactly. Jermaine. <laughs> exactly. His wife side said, Jermaine, please get out the car. Anyway, don't any, let Jermaine go. Anyway, Jermaine, anyway. Please don't ride with yeah. chubs and all for Jermaine. Anyway, so. I respect it, though. I love it. I'm glad he did that. I'm not even joking. Yeah, I'm right. I'm not asking you to make jokes no, about I'm it. Making jokes, but I feel like if you if your heart's not in something, and you you, you should listen to your spirit. I respect that wholeheartedly. I respect it. So I'm not gonna count like that. I'll go for no, 
Push up is the No, no, you have to count like that. Are you kidding me? That's the that's the start. That's you're the right. big joker. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You gotta you're right. count like that. You're right. But he doesn't say their name, so technically those are subliminals. Fuck Not the really. Big three nigga, it's just big no, me. Yeah, it's After they did a record for all my dogs three. getting buried and all that shit, like it was too blatant. It was Stop. too blatant. Come and, on. And Drake knew that was about him. And this exactly. what this we what I like. We all knew it was about him. This is what I still love about Pusha. Drake cast a wide net. Yeah. And that's what's going to be so interesting about the next record Drake drops. Because it's not going to be a wide net. Mm -hmm. It's going to be targeted. And we've seen Drake's records targeted. Back to Back was a targeted record. This was for you, Meek, and nobody else. Push Up was a targeted record. He aimed at five different people. He gave it to Future. He gave it to Metro. He gave it to Ross. He gave it to The Weeknd, The Weeknd's manager. And he gave it to Kendrick. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't targeted. Right? So he gave him that. Then he gave him the AI joint. That was targeted. Mm. The Kendrick, yeah. where are you at? I want this, you know, you who I want. Yeah. Kendrick, like, okay. Now, Drake, you gonna get this targeted record. Now I'm at you. I'm at your head with Euphoria. Yeah. So Drake's next record is gonna be targeted specifically to Kendrick Lamar. Who's up right now? I'm glad we're here. I, I have Drake slightly up. I feel push up was better. I don't like that you guys are included like that, but if you're gonna include, like, it's a feature. It's not even his song. That's what makes it so great I because know, look even, how they out. even to this Euphoria <laughs> record, all this shit he's saying is all narratives that we all already heard. But the whole point is saying to Drake is, yo, we just don't appreciate you pretending to be like that if you're not really like that. Like this record even leads back to like that. Yeah, yeah but I mean, like. If you're if you're counting like that as a diss record, then this should have been the targeted one. This should have been the one where he's revealing and talking. Don't keep this baiting. This is a targeted one, yeah, though. But he keeps baiting. Oh, don't make me really have to say my stuff. Nah, but you should have really said this, it in I'm this you. one. Drake's I, doing the same thing, though. No, I'm, I'm with Alex. Like, I, I, here's the thing, and and I had to I had to temper my expectations of Euphoria, and the reason I had to temper my expectations of Euphoria is because I was expecting Kendrick to come with a nuke. When I when I looking at it through hip hop history lens, to me, push up was take over and I thought Kendrick was going to come with a ether like oh shit and don't get me wrong Jay responded twice back to ether none of them could fuck with ether super ugly couldn't fuck with ether and even though blueprint 2 was a great record that that really couldn't fuck with ether so I I was expecting Kendrick to jo George Bush the button baby like hit well no Donald J Trump the button cuz oh, you know Trump is going to let it fly yeah. when he gets back in if he gets back in but but I um <laughs> I had to temper my expectations to say oh he not going for the nuke right now Drake did a couple of well-calculated drone strikes. Mm -hmm. And so now Kendrick is coming back doing some well-calculated drone strikes as well. I think it was good. I think it it's good, good too. Yeah. I don't have any... I, hmm. Objectively, and I'm like, I, hey, listen, you can't have these conversations if you're too much of a Drake stand, and you can't have these conversations if you're too much of a Kendrick See, stand. that's why being Team Dreamville over here is such a great thing. Is it, though? Because you, we're unbiased. I'm just objective. But I think this is foreplay right now. Like we ain't no, I think no. we're a little past this, foreplay. This is you and we're, we're, we're a little yeah. past foreplay, brothers. Okay. They, they trying to control their nut right now. But this not. Yeah. This is not. They in it. it. But this isn't it. Like this, this isn't, isn't it. it. That's this right. Isn't... That's right. That's right. That's how. That's what I heard Euphoria. That's how I felt. I'm like, like we we more. marching. We on yeah. the field. We yes. on the field, and we about to see. The eye game to is eye. on. The score it might even started. be. The yeah, score might be started. zero zero. The score might even be seven seven right now. 7-7. Seven, 7-7, seven. It's seven, seven, but it's still like first quarter, second quarter. Like, you're looking at it. Cause, all right, okay, like okay. 10-7. Ten, ten, I think Drake's up a field goal. Nigga, no. Drake's up a field goal. No, he got oh. he got deduction because of the song getting taken nah, down. Nah, I don't, no, that, that, that's that not a count. deduction. I, I, I think it's I, I a think deduction. That was super clever of to use the AI. Like, I that, agree. The I, angle, uh, Pac and Snoop, that's a dope-ass angle. Drake, like, everybody Drake, who's shitting on that, that's crazy. I, no. I, I'll say Drake is up 10-3. Mm. No, may, maybe even maybe even 13-7, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Let's just say like that was a touchdown. It's first quarter, mm -hmm. right? Like that was a touchdown, right? Or maybe we can even say a field goal, but I, I'll give him, I'll say it's like a, that was a touchdown. It's a now, feature. Did y'all listen to the AI record since? I did, no. But like that, like that was a touchdown, right? So now you're like, damn, what do, Drake ain't score yet. Drake ain't score yet. Drake ain't score yet. Yeah. But he comes out with push-up. 
I go, oh shit. Which, by the way, push up is not really moving the needle either. We like the record, but. Nah, push up. You're crazy. You got white boys. I thought you non biased. You got white crazy. boys yelling I at am, you. No, you got I'm white not... boys yelling at Metro. Yes. No. Shut your whole ass <laughs> up. Oh, no, no, you're right. That part is. But when you play, or when I play records, push up, sure. Nobody's really singing along or rapping along to anything but that Metro part. When Like That comes on, it's the whole part. No. It's, but like it's, that is a better record. It's though. Future's ad libs. It's Kendrick's part. Like the whole record is. And like that was number one three weeks in a row. So I said like that is a touchdown. But then push up comes right, and it's like oh and shit. And it's not a touchdown, so it's not. You don't same think it's a touchdown? Point. It was a touchdown. Push up, push up is a touchdown. It's yak. It's not push a hit. Dope. It's not a hit record. It don't gotta be a hit, but it's a. But dope like record. that is a hit record. But it's you not his record. That's not. But it, it's not. Push up it's, is a dope record. It's now. not on the even. I'm not saying it's not a dope record. I'm saying, what is it in basketball? You get a regular point, that's two points. Let's right? take the And hits. then you get a three. Let's that take... record is a three. Uh, like that is a three. Nah, and push like up is a two points. Do you not say like that's a touchdown? Because let's take the, the, the charts off of it. Just lyrically, what he did on that record, taking on five different rappers, it's a dope ass record. I got, I was highly impressed by like that when I heard like, like that. Like that versus push ups, the which one wins? I think that'll be round one. Yeah, that's round one. Which one wins? But that's why I said I give Drake, I mean, I give Kendrick seven, and I give Drake seven. All right, and then, then, I give, two? then I give Drake three more. Mm -hmm. wait, that, wait, wait, wait. I feel so like what? the AI record was a field goal. So it's AI versus Euphoria. Which one won? No, I don't count AI versus Euphoria. I count everything no. Drake has done thus far versus Euphoria and like that. It's record to record. No, no. that's not the way this works. We're, we're, we're measuring bodies of work because like that is a feature that you got to factor into this. Yes, yeah, I got to factor in. You got to factor You're like crazy. that into this. Then you factor in the uh, push-up record. Then you got to factor in the AI record. I like the AI record. The reason I like the AI record because Number one, I, I, I thought Drake was going to come back with something, but the fact he was putting pressure on Kendrick, like, Kendrick, you on the clock. And I still think it was creative to do the Tupac and the Snoop Dogg shit. Yep. But Euphoria is six minutes long. So kind of Kendrick is giving you, he's barring up all that shit. <laughs> I'm giving you enough for all that shit. I'm giving you enough for push-ups but but and TaylorMade. But there's now a lot of round two. But there's a lot of filler. It's a no, lot of filler. I don't filler. think it's filler. I think you don't know what it's he's not saying. Not a lot of filler. Not a lot of filler. I don't, and by the way, we're not, this is, I'm not even looking at this as boxing. I'm looking at this as football. I think we're in, we're, we're still in the second quarter. I can almost say we're in the halftime right now. And the score right now to me is 10. No, the score right now to me might be 14 10. 14 10. Yeah. 14 10. That makes 10. sense. I think it's tied. 14 10 who though? I say Drake. You could even say 13 10. Maybe they missed the, the field goal. Why they missed the field goal? They got well, it because they got If you want to take a little bit off the AI track since it got taken off, down. boom. I did think it was 13 creative. 10 Drake. 13 10 Drake. And then because Drake's about to come back given, again this week. You can't give This is a touchdown. Like Euphoria is a touchdown. If Euphoria is a touchdown and like that is a touchdown, then it's 14. You cannot give a how, feature it, a touchdown. Well, he didn't make not, the song. You the gotta, song was already going to be a hit before Kendrick was on it. That song is fire. I'm not I, mad I, at I got, that. No, no, no. I got to be honest with you. What? I wasn't going to be listening to Future's album until someone told me Kendrick was on yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, and that's I think just that your, group, that, that, that brought mad preference. eyeballs and ears to that project. So And look at the movement with it. Look how many people jumped out the window with, with that. N that song do you think, would have been do you a hit think that Rick Ross and everything else and everyone else would have jumped out if Kendrick didn't start it? Um, God bless all of them brothers. I'm not thinking yeah, about nothing. This is, I'm just saying, this though, is what we want. But I'm just saying right. the movement of what like that did with Drake. With Drake. Yeah, yeah, I mean Kendrick. You listen, Kendrick. Like that. Kendrick. Kendrick would like that AI. has given hip hop one of its most exciting summers in a long time. Yeah. It's going to be a very exciting mm -hmm. summer, and I'm telling you right now, Aubrey Graham is. I, I, I'm not even putting Drake on the clock because I know Drake responded. We're, he's I trying, know, trying this week. That's the fun thing about it is that you know he's here for the game. Listen, you y'all can say whatever y'all want about that half a nigga, but that that, <laughs> yeah. that, that 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 person right there. Oh my god! That person right there rises to every challenge. He does. Yeah. He when, does. Win, yeah. win, lose, or draw. He ain't, he didn't play with me. You know, he didn't play with Pusha T and Kanye when he came out with Duffy, even though I feel like he lost that. He ain't playing with Kendrick. He ain't playing with Metro. He ain't playing with Future. He like, he didn't play with Ross. Like, he he has risen to every challenge. Now, we can have all these conversations about him having Ghost Riders and him being from Canada and him not being from culture. 
That boy be moving like an MC. He moved like an MC who ain't backing down from no lyrical challenge. I respect it. Yeah. I really, really do. I'm gonna use this in the fight. I really do. So I, I stand <laughs> on I stand on what I said a couple of weeks ago. I feel like his next move is going to be. It might even be twofold. He might give us something just for the streets, or he might just go ahead and give us this 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 radio record. Like it's gonna be a a Drake record. A rec you know, Drake makes hits. Yes. I think it's gonna be like a hit that we get and it's going to be a diss as well. That's what I a that's what I back. feel. Yeah. Back to back. A, a back to back. Yes, that's what I feel. Even though push ups felt like a back to back, but I think he's going to really give us one. Feel like a yes, back to back. It does. It, it we gets are not played. in the club. Back to back was bringing off in the club. We're, we're yeah. not bringing off to push ups in the club. I'm yeah, not saying it, it doesn't have the same effect. I'm not saying it's a bad record. No, I'm, okay, with you. Okay, I'm not okay. saying there's no points. Okay, the yeah. Like Drake and Sexy Red could pop ass to back to back. Like it had that beat. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I'll give you that. Like, <laughs> but that was an amazing, it's amazing <laughs> yeah, this record. Like, pop ass. <laughs> okay. But I'm happy this is happening, y'all. That's I'll the moral of the story. I feel like I can't believe you're saying Drake is in the lead right now. I don't think I said that. Yes, you yes, did. You did. said 14 10. Nah, no, I'm just trying to factor the scores. But 13, that ain't 10. accurate. So well, I need well, you to well, fix that well, before we move on. I'm not good with the score thing. <laughs> I'm not good with like, the score thing. But what I will say, no. What I will say, if you're objective, if you're not a Kendrick Stan, if you're not a Drake Stan, you can appreciate what they both have done thus far. Yes. For sure. That's why I said it's either tied. Maybe boxing is the right analogy. Maybe they're even on the scorecard right That's now. That's what I think. That's what I, I got them even on the scorecard right now. And, 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 and if I had to give the lead, I can't give the lead to and nobody. If you give I, the lead, it's, it's Kendrick because of like that. He has a hit record already. I would give him the lead just slightly. Is that it, what matters though? Like, with, okay, look. Push up and euphoria. I think push up's better. Because of the beat, though. No, you it's, it's, a, it's a better song. He yeah, came not with angle lyrically. Not better lyrically. Not better lyrically, but he, very, lyrically, 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 better lyrically, but he came record. with angles that we were surprised about. Like, uh, Kendrick ain't saying nothing new. I think yeah. they both have their but, nuances that makes it win. Like, for Drake, with push-ups, it's the way he attacked everybody. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But for Kendrick, his, his dope nuance with this was... But how you how ever... he worded the narratives that we already yeah Kendrick, Kendrick didn't use any new subject matter but it is a new angle because... so he took six minutes and thirty seconds to not give us nothing new but it's a the... it's a psychological analysis of a human you mean too biased Alan the yeah. Canadian accent was crazy that's crazy the bad bitch comment with sexy that's hilarious because right. everybody's it's like that's yo right. what's and going on his manhood his fatherhood all you that you won't grow up. That's what he's telling me. That's what he's saying. And you then, you not really then, like that. That's right. You don't go, you're a boy, so. but I ain't seen a man and then yet. Drake is just coming at his size. That's it. <laughs> it's and, good. and he played off that. I'll beat up your feet. <laughs> and most importantly, the most important thing to come out of this, you biracials can't say nigga no more. <laughs> You like skinned people. And that's why you're being biased because you, no you're more. biracial. I'm Afro Latino and black, all right? <laughs> yeah. Now you want to be like, you yeah. stop. No, no, you <laughs> can't, you if, can't do if, that. If Kendrick's wife is nigga. black, I'm black. If you refer if to yourself Kendrick's as Afro Latino, you're already exactly. You can't say nigga no more. I'm black oh, no, and Afro Latino. You can't say nigga no more. You can, say nigga. you can say Nick. Okay, so Kendrick's wife can't say it. Say Nick, say Nick Poppy or something. Like Nick, Nick Pop <laughs> Say Poppy Nick something. Oh like that's something like that, but oh you can't say God. you can't say Negro. By the way, none of us should be saying. By the no way, they more. say yep. Negro. Who? Yeah, the Spanish the people, people who say Negro. Yeah. Say Negro. Okay. Negro. Well, Negro. I can't wait to see what happens next. Let's play some bills, Taylor. Salute to Chime. Chime, thank you for supporting the Brilliant Idiots and sponsoring today's episode. When you find new ways to save, you can reach your financial goals easier and still have the occasional treat. With a Chime checking account, you get features like fee-free overdraft up to $200 with SpotMe or get paid up to two days early with direct deposit, okay? Join millions of Chime members who are working on financial progress. Chime has no monthly fees or maintenance fees. And with Chime, you can get access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. Get spotted on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. And remember, Chime helps you make progress with fee-free overdraft up to $200, okay? Set up direct deposit into your Chime account after a qualifying direct deposit of $200. Plus, Chime will notify you to enroll in SpotMe with an activated debit card. Chime will spot you up to your limit when you exceed your balance. Your next direct deposit is applied to your negative balance. Chime never charges fees or interest for using SpotMe. Take more control of your finances and say goodbye to monthly fees. Open your account in minutes at Chime.com slash idiots. That's Chime.com slash idiots. Chime feels like progress, okay? 
Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Scribe Bank N.A. Members FDIC, spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in spot me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosure for details. Let's get back to the show. Church announcements. Nyla, what you got? Church announcements. Uh, what I got? What's your next certified vibe? Oh, next certified vibe is in D.C. May 18th. We got They Headlining and uh, Nucci. So, live band, D.C. I think it's going to be a vibe. Oh, yes. And then, also, podcast, we need to talk. We drop three episodes a week, two interviews, and then one full length, kind of like this one, debating. So, definitely tap in. So, we need to talk and... Yeah, Vibe Hour every Sunday night on Power 105. Make sure you guys tune in, hear me spin new artists. And ain't you doing something in Vegas this weekend? Oh, yeah. But, it, I mean, I'm going to Vegas for Lovers and Friends. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> My church announcements. Uh, Once again, thank you to everybody who came to the Black Effect Podcast Festival in Atlanta. Uh, can't wait to do it again next year. But my new book... Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. I thought I had a copy on me, but I don't. I got Sarah Jake Roberts books with me, who I'm loving. Uh, it's called Power Moves, and Ignite Your Confidence, and Become a Force. She's not on Black Frivolous Publishing. I just love Sarah Jakes Roberts, and I uh, love this book. I think y'all should read it. Um, but my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying. Oh, it's another good one. My Quiet Time with God. This is uh, Pretty V's mother, mm. Pastor G. Yori Gibson. It's 30 daily devotionals to jumpstart your day. This is available uh, wherever you buy books right now. Love Pastor G, man. That's Pretty V's mom. Pretty V hosted the Black Effect Podcast Festival. But uh, my new book comes out get, uh, April, no, May 21st. Get Honest or Die Line, Why Small Talk Sucks. I hate small talk. I don't like, you know, people who just try to make, you know, small chit chat with you. But also I hate, you know, micro conversations. You know what I mean? I feel like, you know, we make a lot of micros, macros nowadays so this book is just essentially giving you something bigger to talk about you know what I mean I feel like we talk too small we think too small nowadays so this 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 book is literally giving you a bunch of bigger things um you know to discuss I got some of my favorite big talkers in the book like my man Elliot Connie who's a psychotherapist I got him you know in a chapter with me and my man Aaron Magruder you know somebody who man just one of the most brilliant people I've ever met in my life you know we uh we 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 we, we share a lot of a lot of big ideas quite often, man. Like, every time I talk to that dude, I get inspired, like, to just spark something. So he's in there for a chapter as well. Yes, Aaron Magruder, who created the Boondocks. So make sure you go pick that up. It's available for pre-order right now everywhere you buy books uh, in stores May 21st. And go to whysmalltalksucks.com right now to not just pre-order, but you can go see uh, which city I'm going to be in because I'm hitting, like, 11 or 12 cities starting the first week in May. So I'll be in New York, I'll be in Jersey, I'll be in Philly, I'll be in, you know, Atlanta, I'll be in Maryland, I'll be in Vegas, I'll be in LA. I'll outside. Be in, yeah, I'm outside, <laughs> outside for a couple of weeks. Unk is outside. I like this. Yeah, I'm outside for a couple of weeks. I met you when your first book dropped. That's when you met me? That's when I, like, got to know you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but why small talk sucks .com. Go there. I'll be in, you know I'm coming to Charleston. I'll be in Charleston, South Carolina as well. So just go to why, why small talk sucks .com. You know, if, if, see if I'm in your city, get tickets, and we'll see you at these bookstores. Taylor, let's do some Asking Idiots because we've been here too long. Can I give a quick, it's not really of a Of course, trick. Chris. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out uh, slash R.I.P. to Dallas Penn. Oh, man. Uh, who passed away, unfortunately, last night when we were recording today, man. this week. Um, we were talking a lot about kind of the beginning of podcasting at the top of the show. And Dallas, uh, he's probably best known as the co-host of the Combat Jack show. Oh. But really one of the innovators of the space, one of the pioneers of the space. Um, saw a lot of things, a lot of the possibilities before virtually anybody else there, there literally wouldn't be a combat jack show without dallas and uh without a combat jack show i'd argue a lot of what we enjoy right now wouldn't be where it's at either and also dallas um really like a true new york original the type of which there aren't or don't seem to be quite as many of anymore uh so big loss anyone who's listening who's a fan of dallas or you know those shows uh, just wanted to acknowledge him. How did um? I wonder how Dallas. Like I, I, I mean, I knew Dallas. Like I met him a couple of times. I didn't, you know, 
I didn't have a relationship with him. I wonder how he looked at the the podcasting landscape now. I talked about it with him a lot. Because there was a time when Combat Jack and them was the only thing moving. Literally. There was no other hip-hop podcast. Maybe, you know, uh, Juan Epstein. That's about it. I mean, Dallas was doing online viral stuff before anybody else. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about J. Cole, too. J. Cole, when he was on the Combat Jack show, said the reason I moved to New York was I wanted to meet Dallas Penn. Mm -hmm. I was so inspired by the stuff he was doing online. He Dallas was just way ahead of his time. But, uh, you know, he's a close friend of mine. We lived in the same building. I saw him all the time. We wow. talked about the state of things all the time. He loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he... Dallas could be a hater and a chaos agent, there's no doubt, but he didn't, you know, I, I think sometimes when you're kind of like first out the gate, you can fall into a trap of kind of looking around being like, well, where's our acknowledgement? Where's, you know, the roses or the flowers, whatever. Dallas wasn't like that. Like he ate this shit up. He loved it. Mm -hmm. He would have kept creating, uh, which I think is kind of what makes it sad. Damn. So sorry for the down. Uh, no, no, no. That it needed to be done. Rest I think in it's peace to Dallas. Important again to acknowledge him. So, so, so it was Com Combat founded the Combat Jack show. Well, actually, I was talking to A King. Shout out Salute to A King. A -King. Today. I saw a guy. A King is that Black Effect with yep. us now. Salute to A King. A King was trying to start an internet radio show and wanted to interview Dallas. Interviewed Dallas, and when Dallas came by their studio, Dallas was like, "I want to bring my man Reggie along." And King didn't know who Reggie was. And after the interview, Reggie apparently told King, like, hey, I'd like to send you some writing I'm doing. I'm trying to get into writing. And for those of people out there who remember, Combat Jack had started a blog called Daily Mathematics, where he talked about his time as an entertainment attorney. And after King read that, he was pressing Dallas to do a show. Dallas didn't want to do it by himself. So he said, well, why don't I do it with my friend Reggie? Oh, wow. King really had enjoyed daily mathematics was an incredible blog you can probably go online and, and find the you know, i mean these postings are probably 15 years old at this point but they still hold up and that's how it all started literally wow dallas was also a member of the decepticons which was uh infamous new york infamous street gang new york street gang one i of thought he was a low life and he was a low life okay, so okay, okay. he was really instrumental in a lot of aspects of the culture like he was there from the ground floor and all that shit how you be a blood and a crypt he figured it out. Wow. Now he figured so it out. So when did Pete come? Pete was the next one up? Uh, so then Dallas brought Pete along. And then Pete came in through Dallas. Uh, I think Ben Hameen, uh, Jonathan Mena, like a lot of people. Dallas was a talent, but he was also one of those talents who could like identify mm. in other people and, and shared the wealth and brought people along. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, God bless, man. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Rest in peace to Dallas Penn. Rest in peace to the great Combat Jack. Like, it's crazy to me to think that both uh, Combat and Dallas are, are gone. So what's the, I mean, it, that has to be it, right? Like It's life, man. Yeah. You know, you live life long enough, man. You're going to see all of us, you know. True. Eventually transition. Like, that's just the way it is. I just be wondering how, I'm like, damn, how old am I? Am I that old or are people dying younger? I think it's both. Yeah, because I, I I remember I remember I I was with I was I was with Combat a week before he passed. Sure. Yeah, I went to, I was I went to go see him in Brooklyn, and I never forget how cold it was. It was freezing that that because he died in December, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I saw him like uh, matter of fact, it was the it was the week going into Thanksgiving. When did he pass? Like maybe two right weeks after that. Right around Christmas, yeah, right in December for sure. Yeah, rest maybe. in peace, man. Premier Pete spoke to Dallas for an hour on the phone last night. Really? Yeah. No now, Dallas oh was in the gosh. hospital, so we knew. Oh. There was, but he was planning on coming home. But uh, diabetes, folks. Damn. Don't play around. No joke. Nah, don't play with that shit, man. Take care of yourself. Uh, let's do some Asking Idiots, Taylor. Yeah. Also, can I say? Uh, no, Taylor. Bad transition. It's a terrible okay, transition. Dallas, <laughs> Dallas would <laughs> like it, whatever it is. He's, I just wanted to say I also was passing out my keychains for Taylor Made It Productions. <laughs> this motherfucker. Is, God damn. I wish you went last, Chris. Like, Rest in I... peace. But I got keychains. I know. <laughs> but I was going to okay. even talk about 
trying to be like, well, at least, you know, they made it. I don't know. I'm trying to make, find a nice. There's, no, there's nothing there. <laughs> I got the keys to heaven. If you got the keys to heaven, <laughs> you need to buy my keychains. Okay? Hey, enter in heaven. No, bro, I got something that can it. unlock those pearly gates. Yo. My keychains. <laughs> I just you said I could. Shout out to your mama. <laughs> Shout out I to your I was mama. really not trying to. Your mama was to... at the second annual Black Effect podcast. Oh, that's right. Man. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. That's right. Your mama just, was there did. and her daddy was hating on a play. You hear he me? He was about to really uh, punch you in your mouth. Don't he was, that. though. <laughs> Listen, Taylor goes, take a picture, dad. dad that's, I don't take no pictures. No <laughs> word. Your dad, your dad Damn. just pissed. Don't do too much. Away. He did it though. <laughs> Taylor, my line. He did. He was pissed. Honestly though, <laughs> honestly on some real shit, he was just he was chilling. He wasn't. He mad. Was all right? Yeah, he wasn't. Mad. I was like, well, I said it. It's a Philly thing. You wouldn't <laughs> exactly. It's a Philly mama thing. Said, it's a Philly Philly thing. thing. Taylor, Taylor mama said, "I'm Ooh. glad you enjoy my pie." No, he didn't. She, she no, she did not. Stop lying to my mom, yo. You know what I got for you next? Stop lying on my mom. Pound cake and pickles. Stop lying. Yeah, that's, that's not what the fuck she said. What did she say then? She just said that Taylor's been irking me with trying to start this business, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be making cake and pickles as well. No, 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 not to no, you. No, she didn't say cake. She <laughs> said, "I'm glad you enjoy my pie. Wait until you taste my pound cake no, she and didn't. pickles." No, she didn't. Ooh. I gotta take some notes from your mom, man. <laughs> Those bars. That's right. <laughs> Those Pound bars right there. Pickles. Can we do some asking the idiots, Taylor? Sexy Red might take that. <laughs> next, <laughs> time, next time my dad come up, I'm telling him to punch you dead in your Why? Stop Why? talking about my parents' marriage. West Philly. <laughs> I love your parents' marriage. Your dad is a Done. lucky, lucky man. Yo, my nigga, chill out. He's promoting her future care. business. I don't care. Hey Chill guys, make sure you get your, get your Taylor Made It keychains Thank available you. now. <laughs> TaylorMadeIt.com. Is that where it's at? Nah, yo. TaylorMadeIt.com. Nah, Taylor pound cakes and pickles. Shut up! Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Let's go to asking the idiot. <laughs> Oh, Lord. All right. What is the problem? I'm dead ass. Stop. Come on, because I got to get the back. Pickles. I was like, holy (laughs) shit. Damn. Let's go, Taylor. Let's go. Let's do some afternoons. Do two afternoons to get the fuck up out of here. She over you. God isn't proud of you right now, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's that's what I was asking Saturday Night in Magic City. Where the wings at? At where the wings at says, if you could talk with any animal for five minutes, what would it be and what would you say? Ooh, I love this. (laughs) I love this. If I could talk with any animal, it would definitely be something in the ocean. I'd like like to find out what a shark strategy is so I can avoid them. I just want to know what they know. I want, I, want to, I want to know what whales and sharks and everybody thinks. I want to know what dog that makes sense. It would definitely be something under the water. I want to talk to something under the water. I want to talk to a whale. I think if you're talking to the shark, uh, Chris, I don't think you ne- should negotiate with terrorists. If you're that close to the shark and you're talking to the shark, he eating your ass. No, what I'm saying is I would ask, like, what is it that you see that makes you go into attack mode? Is it like a certain color? Is it flailing? When you arm? see chicken, what is it that you see that makes you go into attack? Some sharks more? swim right by you. What's what's? Well, because all sharks aren't. Um, no, but even the, the type killers of sharks that eat humans. Even the killers, you'll see. Sometimes they go right through people, right past people. Yeah. There's something that we do that makes them snap into attack mode. They might just it's be about moody. taste. We go. We look at menus every day. <laughs> We look at menus every day and right. bypass all types of food. You bypass all types of restaurants to go eat where you want to eat. You ever seen a buffet? You walk past all the stuff on the buffet and get what you want. I don't see that goes for any animal, though. Any That's animal right. could just attack. No, so so, he, so okay. he wants to know what's their they, appetite, they, they what they like. The sharks attack people on uh, surfboards, for instance, because from the bottom of the ocean looking up, the arms and legs over the side of a surfboard might look like a seal. To a shark, for instance. Okay. So, are you more likely to get attacked on a surfboard? Also, they think certain Maybe colors. Maybe surfers are more tasty. Could be. <laughs> it's I'm serious. Like we overcomplicating this. Why do we act like these sharks don't talk? Same way we recommend good restaurants to each other. Yo, go eat a surfer. Surfers taste good as a oh motherfucker. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're they probably gonna we're travel <laughs> fast in the sea. They don't want to eat good people with glasses. Well, let's say glasses, do, do sharks, glass, uh, sharks profile races? Do they profile? Uh, Sizes of people, we don't know. This I want to talk to a cat. 
Or maybe an owl. They say owls are wise. Ovi, Ovi ho. No, no, no. <laughs> Yo, no, 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 no. All right, I'm sticking with cats. I'm sticking with cats. Only because cats were worshipped back in, like, Egypt. That's true. So I want to know what that is about. Taylor? I said either a whale or, I don't know, maybe a monkey. (laughs) A monkey? But why? Why? Well, whales, I guess... The same type, like they're the like especially killer whales. Killer whales are, they scare me honestly. I've been seeing too many too many documentaries of them, but I just want to know like what they be seeing in. I don't know. I mean, we don't even know killer whales even really kill. What do you mean? Have you not seen documentaries? They kill they Mike. Killer Mike ain't never killed strate- nobody. They're more strategic than sharks. Shut up. Killer whales are like Shut for real, up. for real. This guy just. I didn't even hear what he said. I don't care. But <laughs> exactly. Killer that whales are crazy. different. Yo, a cat would be dope. And monkeys are imagine like you're like being Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You got your talking cat. No, nah, I'm with that. guy talking to you. No, don't go to that dance. No, don't I do want, the same. I want, I want to talk to the water, yo. I want to know what's That's in that what water. I, like, I, I want to know what's down there. Yeah, I want to know what's down there, yo. Fine, fine, yeah. fine. You got five minutes you're going to waste to talk to a cat. Oh, goddamn cat. <laughs> or <laughs> like, cat's going to help me navigate where I'm at right now. The water, that's probably my afterlife. I'm yeah. not there right now. I'm dealing with now. But as I said, a and whale or a monkey, the... and especially I want a monkey from like, hopefully like the Lion King. What's his name? Oh. Rafiki. 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 That's actually a good one. What about Rafiki you, Alex? Would be good. I would go with the uh, sea animal just because I want to know what's down there. Cat, I'm with we you. Ain't, we didn't. Like, Wait, didn't I even there's so much of the, the ocean that we haven't oh, explored they, yet. They might say there's memories. So it's like they could tell us. Catsarose.ch says, "Why does Charla hate Kanye so much? I don't hate Kanye. I don't hate nobody. Anytime you hear me having conversations about people, it is because of my experiences with said individual. And I'm not. I don't hate on Kanye. I'm just telling y'all." What I know about Kanye and everything that I know about Kanye, everything you see about Kanye now, none of it surprises me because I've heard him say all of this shit before. Cue the Kendrick uh, bar. I done told you. Kanye, listen. <laughs> where do you walk? Where do you talk? Where do you... <laughs> By the way, Kanye shouldn't be saying nigga no more. I don't want to hear Kanye yeah. say nigga no more. If you seek that kind of white validation the way Kanye does, you should not say nigga no more. <laughs> And that's not hate. I don't hate Kanye in no way, shape, or form. I just know that he ain't my type of nigga. That's all it boils down to. He don't like y'all. He don't like us. Don't let none of that shit fool you. But you know, Kanye cares about Kanye. That's, that's what it is. That's, and that's so disappointing. That's fine. You know, he, he, he cares about Kanye. Mm-hmm. There's a great book that I recommend people to read all the time. The five, five, the five, the five types of people that ruin your life. And it's about narcissists, sociopaths they call them high conflict people in the book mm. and and the only way to deal with high conflict people is to not deal with them mm. literally that's the only way to deal with them and Kanye is a high conflict person I don't think you know I I want to deal with so mm. simple as that <laughs> Tristan Shop Talk says you think this weed thing being rescheduled is just Biden getting votes yes of course it is because it's getting rescheduled but it's still not going to be legal you know for recreation you know, so it's good for those of us who are in the weed business. You know, we got a dispensary opening in uh, Newark, a dispensary and a consumption lounge opening in Newark. So it's good for those of us who are in the weed business. But to, for everybody else, it's like they're still not making marijuana, you know, legal uh, for recreation. So it's the first step, I guess. It's a step. Last Definitely question. Harrison. <laughs> Where's Debbie Harrison at? What oh. would Charlotte do if he was a bad bitch? Junior Harrison says, what would Charlotte do if he was a bad bitch? What do you mean? What would I do? I am a bad bitch (laughs) now. Exactly. (laughs) What the fuck? What are you talking about? I'll be doing Breakfast Club every morning, (laughs) brilliant idiots once a week, okay? Publishing books, all right? Let them know. Producing podcasts. (laughs) What are you talking about? Like, yes. Advocating for mental health. What do you mean? I'm, I'm me. What you talking about? Cue Trina in. <laughs> why, why he goes with his bad bitch rant? <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one to end on. Oh, no, let's just, uh, I'll go to this one. R. Flores 18, then I'll go to the one above. R. Flores 18 says, what's your favorite white person diss? I got four black grandparents. You see that one trending after Euphoria? <laughs> Do you see that? I got four black grandparents. It's hilarious. I love that. My favorite white person diss is Milk Crickets. 
That's funny. What? Milk that's, cricket. That's really funny. Calling a white person a milk cricket. I, I never heard of that. That's the that's one of my favorites. That's better than cracking to me. What oh, cricket. I thought they were saying like, oh, that's what they're saying. Yeah, what's your favorite white person? I thought they this? meant like a white person's this, like an M M&M. and M. Nah, milk cricket. <laughs> oh. That's my favorite. That's my favorite one. Milk cricket is my favorite white person. This calling somebody a milk cricket. Four black grandparents is hilarious yeah. to say. To uh, a half a half a black person, <laughs> that is hilarious. I got four black. So grandparents. like, whose side are you on in this beef? I'm like, I got four black grandparents. So my, <laughs> yeah, my that's beef on, so crazy. I'm, <laughs> I'm standing with my grandparents. I do wonder about that though. Like when I hear, even when when Drake when J Cole says things like, um, "What he said in Crackers ain't never did shit for me." Yo, that was wild. What he said. It's like, what did your family think? <laughs> <laughs> I be one. I do be yeah. wondering stuff like that. Like you can't just be out here dissing. Cracker doesn't bother anybody, unfortunately. But I ain't even talking about the cracker aspect. Just the fact, like, what do you mean, white people? We never did nothing for you? Because we got the, white family. His mom was like, his mom's white, right? Yeah, but I think she had, like, a drug addiction. I don't know how present she was, according uh -huh. to his raps. Well, hmm. he still got a white family. Which I ain't knocking. <laughs> I'm not mad at Listen, you, you are who you are. It is what it is. We just don't want to hear you saying nigga no more. Um, <laughs> K-X-D-X-K-W-X-S-H-E. We can end with this one. Would heaven still be heaven without your family there? Fantastic question. Wow. No. Um, well, we don't know what heaven is. Well, like, you know, we say here on earth, we, we say that, you know, you can create your own heaven and your own hell here on earth, right? Like there's, um... You know, you can be in a physical, you, you might be paralyzed in a coma, that can be considered a physical hell. But if you healthy and you know, you can walk and you're not paralyzed and you got your faculties, that's that could be considered a physical heaven. You know, somebody who's dealing with, you know, schizophrenia, that can be considered a mental hell. But if you know, you got your sound mind, that's considered a, a, a mental heaven. So when we're talking about this, uh, this, this, this place called heaven, this concept, called heaven that we all let's just say we let's just say we're talking about how Christians discuss it. We die, then you go to this place. How, what what kind level of consciousness will we have when we get there? Will we even will we even be aware of our past life? They say, you know what well, I'm saying? That's what I mean. Like would you even be a, aware that you were connected to these individuals, you know, this wife that you had, these children that you had, this mother, this father. Like, would you even know? But according to, what's the person that we had on with the big hair? Oh, uh, Teresa uh, Judice, the Long Island Medium. Is that her yeah. name? Like, I know you she's do Long remember. She, she's made it seem like you do remember about your family when you died. I think, I think um, it's like being cut from different cloths. I think that's how, like, your soul is. So I think your soul... Not to say reincarnates, but like you got soul ties. So sometimes, yeah. you know, your your mom might end up being your sister, your sister might end up being your daughter, but mm -hmm. that's just because you guys are in like the same tribe yeah. in another life. Yeah, like, believe in the in spiritual world. You believe in reincarnation? Mm -hmm. Like turning into like an animal or something like my, that? Too? My in laws do very seriously. Really? Really? Yeah, they just talk very matter of factly about what they were in past lives. And stuff Are you like serious? That. Yeah. What were they? So uh, my father-in-law was a frog that was trapped in a cage along the side of a pond. And my mother-in-law was a little girl who came and opened the cage and let the frog out. And because of that, he's now like indebted to her for a certain number of lifetimes. Wow. I'm shocked you haven't turned that into a children's book, Chris. What? <laughs> I've heard you tell this story before and I'm shocked you haven't turned that into a children's book. What's the moral? Like, I don't know. To but be, that's a be, great be in love, to be in love or yeah. something. Well, like. but it also speaks to the dynamic of their relationship because she kind of bosses him around. So, like, the running joke is it's because he's still indebted to her for freeing him seven lifetimes ago. But, like, I'm not mad at that. They have another friend, and I was talking to him, and he's like, Yeah, I was like the lead of the Chinese army in 530 AD, and I took over most of Western China. And then, you know, but just. You watch well, Seven Deadly Sins? Well, can nah. you, do you watch Seven Deadly Sins? Mm. Oh, you give me anime vibes. Where I don't watch anime. Where, I just don't watch anime. where are they getting that from, though? Like, why do they believe that so much? Uh, it's part of Buddhism. And it's almost like a religion. In, in Seven Deadly Sins, the two main characters, I forget the name, but it's a guy and a girl. 
but pretty much they keep getting reincarnated and they keep finding each other. Yeah. So like one plays on the side of good, one plays on the side of evil, but he loves good and like it's actually a really dope show. But would you would heaven still be heaven without your family there? I think as J. Cole says, heaven is a mind state. I've been a couple of times. Like, it's what you created. So I think the real thing is, like, focus on your soul. Yeah. How would you explain spirit guides? How would you explain, you know, your, your ancestors? Like, the you know how they say your ancestors all around you. You got spirit guides all around you. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've seen no spirit guides. I've seen those ancestors around me, you know, on and off different plant-based medicines. You see Hercules? Hercules? Yeah. The movie, no. you know how like... The three girls? You ain't never the, seen Hercules? You never seen... Uh-uh. Really? Oh my God, that's a Disney classic. You should watch it. But nonetheless, it's all based off Greek mythology and how like the gods sometimes will come down and like send a message. So it's not really them. It's almost like a, what is it, a hologram type? But it's not a hologram. It's just a spirit. Mm-hmm. But I think it's kind of like Hercules. Like sometimes the greater gods will send somebody or or send a spirit to watch over you, whether it's a cat, whether it's a person, whether it's an actual spirit Mm -hmm. that you can see, but only certain, only certain. But the reason I brought that up, because if you still have your guides following you, like your family members, ancestors, then it's still got to, it got to be family there in some way, right? Like, like, so I I, I don't know. I I believe that, like, I I carry on my grandfather's chain and his ring, and I just feel like that's my, like... I get it. And, I just feel like, and he came to me in a dream. Yeah. So that's how I I feel like. Would heaven still be heaven without your family there? Also depends how old the kids are. You know what I mean? What? what it depends about? how old the kids are too. Like you would if I, I would want all of us to be in heaven grown. <laughs> like yeah, I don't, like I'm serious. So like like, I, like this like this. this Running behind all these little kids ain't heaven. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like running, like having to deal with like two year olds and five year olds and eight year olds. That ain't really heaven. Fifteen year olds, like let's no six. Six would be the sweet spot. Nah, Chris, I need like let's be old. That, I, I, honestly, twenty one. Everybody got to be twenty one. Twenty one. Because then everybody grown. Everybody grown. Like we like we going through some things right now, Chris. You got a fifteen year old at the house. I got a fifteen year old at the house. It's di- like life is different. They say your brain doesn't actually fully develop for men till twenty seven and women till twenty five. Oh well, that, well, I just need development. Because so fifteen, eight, five, and two is just something else. Not it. That is, no, it's, it is it. It's a beaut. I love my kids. It is a beautiful thing <laughs> to have a family. Yo, yo. I'm just simply saying, heaven. <laughs> You want to be Heaven's supposed to be at peace, like, <laughs> but like it, for real, God. This, I'm, think, I'm still running around after kids. Then they would have to have their kids. See, this is why it doesn't make sense. Just from a numbers perspective, there's no way all these people could be around each other at the same. Because I'd want to be around my grandparents, but my grandparents are also somebody's parents and also yeah. somebody's children and those people you know and it's just like I don't be think age is gonna be a factor though it's all energy like imagine you just being a light so it's formless I think yeah. all I think when you pass away as a kid you come back as an animal or something I really feel that what way. why do you I, pass away you don't as a think kid? that humans is the last resort I feel like we've no, been everything absolutely really not. I know this it has got to be another being after human I mean because we're all spiritual beings living human existences yeah. I think all kids who pass away turn into animals because and then they come back and they live their life as an animal for a while and then they may die as animals and reincarnate as humans again and then they then if hopefully they get to grow up in their next in their next lifetime and i wouldn't be surprised if most kids when they die turn into dogs really and that's why all dogs get taken go care to of heaven. <laughs> do you think reincarnation <laughs> is always into an animal though you don't think no, no, reincarnation no. can just be people to people no, I, no, I believe that. I, 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 I've thought about this a million times, and I don't know why. People pass away. I feel like as soon as a person passes away, in a lot of cases, they come, they, they come right back out. Like that dark space is like the womb, and they come right back out mm-hmm. to the light as another human, mm-hmm. back into the light. I really feel that way. I don't know when. I don't know if it's like immediate or if it's a year or two years later. But at some point, you. You pass away, you're in that dark space, and then you come back out as a as a human, another life form. 
That's later my on. goal in life. I want to know what happens. Oh, you won't. You won't. Never gonna know. You won't. I mean, you will when it happens. Yeah. I, I think I just have to get myself to believe something, though, because I, I had too many questions. Well, there's some people who say they've been to hell and back. They've been to hell? Yeah, like, people, they've died for, like, a few, and then they've been, like, resuscitated. Yeah. So they I was just watching a clip of a guy who said he went to hell, came What's back. What's hell, like, his fire? He said it was hot. Not fire. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was hot. Um, damn, what else did he say? He said it was a bunch of people down there. And the, the way he described the hot, he said, like, they're not on fire, uh, but they're all just waiting. And see, that's the Damn. thing. I'm not even... It, 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 just, it, when I hear stories like that, or when I hear tales about hell, why even play with it? Not. Why not just do right? Yeah. Like, just do right just in case. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why even play with it? Somebody created this story. I don't know if people have this much imagination. So why not just do right, just in case? Yeah. You know what I mean? Be sitting here talking about, I knew I shouldn't have listened to them stupid ass niggas on earth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like why, like just in case, do the right I thing. I don't think that hell is this. Like... Some people are just ignorant though. Well. Some people don't know. Well, Some nah. people don't know. And I feel like- yeah, Everybody knows good There's this, it. I'm sorry. Sorry to do this, but J. Cole got a line in this record called Changes. And it goes, listen, what? listen, listen. And what? it goes, <laughs> I believe if God is real, he'll never judge a man because he know us all and therefore he will understand the ignorance and pain to make you take a brother's life, the bitterness and pain that got you beaten on your wife. So he's saying like, if God knows your struggle and he understands your pain, like he understands your why to why you do fuck shit. I need to know who J. Cole thinks is God before I say that's a dope boy. Yeah. Because if it's white Jesus. Oh my okay, God. If it's white Jesus. And is he still going to believe it after or is he going to apologize for it? Wow. You know saying, what? I, like, damn. I have enjoyed I'm just saying. <laughs> this, this is going like, <laughs> this is going like, this is great record and I fuck with that bar. Shout out to Cole. Yes. <laughs> Carolina's all day. Okay, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.